Good morning and welcome to our 123rd weekly webcast. If this is the first time you're joining us, welcome. If you've been with us before, welcome back. And so the way the call works is this is an AMA, meaning you can ask me anything. Uh, you can ask me business questions, personal questions, career questions. And within 24 hours of this call being completed, what my wonderful staff does is they put all the questions you've asked and they put it in the description field along with the time codes so you can click and get immediate access to all the questions so I can save you time. Thanks a lot. And without further ado, let, let's begin. So what I want to do is I want to first of all talk about, I want to talk about networking. Um, behind me, there's a poster that says uh, your network is your net worth. And I really believe that. And it, 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 and there's a reason why I have this, this baseball bat in my hand. Uh, I'll explain why in a second. Sports is wonderful networking boardroom talk. Get there in a second. But I, I find that a lot of people that, that start working um, after you know being in school for the first 20 years of their life or so, they, they don't realize, and neither did I at the time, that you can't just keep your head down and do a great job. You, you, you actually have to ask for everything you want in business. You know, if you want to sale, you got to ask for a sale. If, if you want to get a raise, you have to ask for a raise multiple times. And I can tell you exactly how to do this. And in order to get promoted, you have to ask for a promotion many, many times as well. You'll never make it to the top of any organization without asking to get promoted many times. And there's tactful ways to do it and strategies, which again, I can explain how. Uh, but when we're younger, we, we tend to keep our heads down and if, if we do really well uh, in school, you know, our, our parents are proud of us and life works out well. Then you get older and you start working in companies. And it took me till my 30s to realize this. Uh, many years too late in life, almost, but never too late. It took my 30s to realize that you can't just keep your head down and do a good job. It, it doesn't work that way. Um, you have to be promotional, self-promotional, without being obnoxious about it. Um, and you have to actually ask for raises and promotions over and over again. Otherwise, you won't get them. I promise you. I promise you. And so the, the easiest way to network is to network with people in your company, uh, especially people that are older than you, uh, that have a similar life story to you. Maybe they're from the same hometown or went to the same school. And you can ask them for a coffee or a Zoom meeting uh, every now and then. They're there to help you ask and you'll receive uh, it's prophetic and it's been true since the beginning of time. And so quite often we don't understand how to get promoted uh, and, and get what we want in these big companies we work at. Well, if you have multiple Yodas or mentors, so to speak, uh, that are helping you and guiding you, um, you should be able to figure out the rules. But you got to ask and you, you got to network big time. The same thing when it, when it comes to you know starting your own company. Uh, or, or getting business um, uh, from potential customers. You have to network like crazy. That, that, that's what Elon Musk did uh, for, for decades. He's got a great network. Same thing with Jeff Bezos. He networked in New York at D.E. Shaw for ages. Uh, and then eventually he moved out uh, to, to the West Coast to start Amazon. You have to network like crazy if you want to get anything you want. So how do we network? Well, the best way to network uh, is to actually use LinkedIn. And if you want, what you can do is you can read my book here on networking uh, in order to find out my secrets on, on how I humbly made it. And of course, I've made lots of mistakes in my life too, but I've, uh, I've raised and managed over a billion dollars. I've changed careers many times um, and I've been able to do so because of networking. All my secrets are in that book there. You can get it from my website, uh, which is haroonventures.com. Let's go there together because there's something new I, I want to show you. So as you scroll down to get the, the networking book, you'll see I've got a new free course here for you as well. Uh, get it while you can. <laughs> uh, click here uh, to get the course. It, it's on how to vlog. Uh, I, I hope you enjoy it. Hope you enjoy it. But if you scroll down my, my website here, there's more stuff about my programs, whatever. But right, right here, you can get this book uh, for free. Uh, you can download it. Um, there's a couple hundred pages plus several hours of, of links to YouTube videos that, that I created just, just for you to help you network and get what you want in the world because your network is your net worth. Last thing I want to say about this is my, my love of sports. And sports is great boardroom talk, 
Um, you don't have to be in a boardroom to talk about it, obviously, but it's great uh, water cooler talk at companies because everybody loves a certain sport. Everybody does, right? And if I meet somebody from a new place in the world, let, let's say they're from Baltimore, what I can do is immediately I can start to network by talking about my, my love for the Baltimore Orioles and Cal Ripken. If I meet somebody, you know, from, from Oakland, um, I'll talk about my love for Ricky Henderson, somebody from San Diego, my, my love and admiration for, for the late, great uh, Tony Gwynn, who just passed away. Uh, the same thing goes with anybody from Seattle. I'll talk about Ken Griffey Jr. This is fun wing winging this. And then from Texas, I'll talk about Nolan Ryan, of course. Sports is wonderful boardroom talk. Wonderful boardroom talk and a great way to network uh, as well. In fact, before your next meeting with somebody um, that you're doing an informational meeting with, a potential customer or whatever it is, go to their LinkedIn profile to see what sports teams or athletes, if any, they follow so that you can spark up a great conversation about this. My, I got this when I was a kid. This is a broken bat from George Bell who won the uh, MVP in 1987. And the final thing I'll say about networking is you have to ask. I asked him when I was a kid to sign this baseball bat, which is pretty dope. It was, it was fun. When you're younger, you ask for everything. You ask for autographs over and over and over again. When you get older, you stop asking. You got to start asking again because your network is your net worth. You'll never get anything in life in business unless you ask. Business is about relationships first and product knowledge second. Okay, let me put my baseball bat aside here. All right, get a little bit of my, my water here. And, and I hope you join me with this water challenge. One of my amazing um, uh, MBA degree program students, uh, Christina, uh, what she's done is she's influenced the whole class uh, for this year's MBA class I'm teaching to drink a gallon a day, okay? Uh, or 3.8 liters a day. And you can get this from Amazon. I'm not sponsored by anybody, nor will I ever sell out. But you can get something like this from Amazon. Uh, it's a website. It's called Bottle Joy. You can get cheaper knockoffs. And all it is, it's pretty simplistic. All it is is basically, um, it's got the times on, on the side there. See here? The, all, all the times. So right now, it's, um, it's 9 a.m. my time. I'm a little bit behind schedule, so I'm going to drink this. We are 60% water. Uh, I promise you. If you do this, you will feel great. I think it's more important than diet and sleep even, and it's my biggest problem, one of my many problems. But my biggest problem when it comes to my health is I just don't drink enough water. I eat exceptionally well, uh, I exercise a lot, whatever, but water is the key. You know, you, you can go days and days and days without food, but not without water, yeah. Mm. So as you watch this weekly call with me, if you're watching the replay, this just doesn't apply as much or a vlog taken out of this, this weekly call. But as you're watching this weekly call with me, get a, a thing of water like this, okay? You can get a, an old one liter bottle and fill it up four times throughout the day. But, but I want you to go on this, this water journey with me. I can take you to the water, but I can't force you to drink. That's what I have to say about all my courses. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Let's see what we got next here. Um, all right, first up... We've got here, okay, uh, Asunder is saying, thanks for always being generous. Uh, you're most welcome. Thanks for, for being here, please. You're, you're my customers, my students. You inspire me. And without all of you, none of this would be possible. So thank you. So you wrote, thanks for always being generous. And I feel privileged to be one of your, your students. The privilege is all mine. It's a privilege for me to be able to uh, spend time with so many amazing people from all over the world. And then you wrote, uh, you seem always young and energetic, uh, defying the age, uh, which is just a number. Uh, thanks a million from the bottom of my heart. Uh, th thank you, Sutter. I, I appreciate that. God, God bless you. And God bless my students. Um, th this week, what they, what they did was they, they actually made this unbelievable um, uh, video for me, uh, my MBA degree students. Uh, and, and I was actually teary. They didn't see that, but I was. Um, and, and if you guys want to watch it, uh, what you can do, I actually posted it to YouTube. I, I was so inspired. But um, it's my birthday uh, on February 2nd. That's why they made it. But if, we, if you go to my, my channel here on YouTube, um, what you can do is go to my um, daily vlogs. Where are they? Gosh, I have too much stuff here. Here it is here. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's, it's right here. Um, and then what you can do is um, you, you, you can watch this. Uh, if you want, so I've got it on mute here, but here's a, a lot of my wonderful students here uh, from, from all over the world. Uh, uh, 
they, they touched my heart. And here's Christina I was talking about earlier with respect to the um, um, to the water challenge. So this is one of my students from from Singapore, uh, Abby. Uh, he was initially one of my Udemy students, um, and, and now he's one of my, my MBA students here. But um, and then you can see I've got so many countries uh, represented: Austria. Um, yeah, and, and, and this guy here, great great dude. He, he actually recorded this birthday greeting for me uh, in, in a theater uh, in, in Vienna. Very very nice of him. Anyway, we have we have students uh, all over the world. This is Queen uh, from uh, South Africa. The list goes on and on and on. Check it out if if you can. I I love my students to death. I turn four. There's there's a uh, 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 Melanie. Love you. Uh, there I I. Uh, I or Melody, sorry, um, I, I and this is from from Tokyo here. I turned forty nine the, the other day. As you can hear, I'm not speaking as good as I used to. I'm getting older here, right? Uh, but they made this video, and, and it really, really touched my my heart. It really did. So um, thank you so much, guys. If if you're watching my 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 MBA students, I, I I love you. Thank you. I love all my students. All right. Next up, I've got um, uh, Sunder is saying. First of all, happy birthday to you. Oh, thank you. And then you, you wrote the whole happy birthday song, God bless you. And then you wrote, Dear Sir Chris, uh, Chris, just please, happy birthday to you. Uh, and then you wrote, Best Heartfelt Wishes for a very happy and memorable and, and blessed birthday. Uh, enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. My, my life is almost one third over. We're all going to make it to well over 150 here, I promise you, if we take care of ourselves. Thank you. Uh, and then Sunder wrote here, um, How do I express myself accurately and precisely? I consider myself as an introvert uh, and experiencing difficulties in my personal work and in life situations. Please uh, advise key aspects to focus on. Yeah, so I, I think the most important thing you can do is, first of all, tell yourself, I don't care what people think of me. I don't care. And, and I used to be just like you. I was an introvert. Uh, I, was, I was a programmer for, for years at um, Accenture. Accenture. That joke never gets old. Great company, by the way. And I remember I would code for 10 to 12 hours straight. Um, and then I would go to a party or go to a bar or club with my buddies on Friday nights. And, and I kind of be a little bit shy because I was, I was isolating myself a, a little bit. Um, and then I got to a point eventually uh, where I just told myself, I don't care what people think. I'm just going to be me. And you do you. You be you. Because as Dr. Seuss said, uh, every um, everyone that... Uh, Anyone that minds uh, doesn't matter. No, those that mind don't matter, and those that matter don't mind. God, I butchered that quote, but I know what you're getting at there. I, you should hopefully understand what, oh my God, I suck today. I can't talk. I can't talk. But but that's that's what I did. I just told myself, I just don't care. I don't care what people think. And, and I there's this chart I love that's kind of changed, changed the way I think about life. And there's on the x-axis here is your age. On the y-axis is give a damn, okay? And again, age, give a damn. When you're down here and you're young, you don't care what people think of you. You have meltdowns in restaurants. You don't, you don't care. When you're older, you don't have confidence problems either. You just don't care. Maybe that's why I don't care anymore. Just kidding. The problem is when you're in between, you're up here in your 20s, 30s, 40s, whatever it is. Um, you're up here and you give a damn people think. And I call this the triangle of despair. And you need to avoid it at all costs. You need to live at a very, very low level on that chart of not caring. You know, the simple art of not giving a damn. There's a book about that too. Um, and if you live at that level, you'll 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 be happier because you won't spend the, your your entire life thinking what what do other people think of you. And most people aren't thinking of us anyway. That's a, that's a little secret there. It's true. They don't care. So just be you. Just do you. Um, and it's interesting because the best entrepreneurs on the planet uh, are the ones that don't give a damn what anybody thinks because people thought they were crazy for decades when they started their empires. So you're, you're, you're crazy at first, then you get a little bit of success, then you're a crazy genius, then you get a lot of success, and then you're just a genius. But along the way, you don't give a damn what anybody thinks. I'm still in the crazy stage, please. Yeah, but, but that's what I want you to do. I want you to say to yourself, I don't give a damn what anybody thinks of me. And I'm going to live my life in my terms and do what I want to do. You know, I'm not saying be rude or disingenuous, but just be you. You do you. Your, your, your family and friends love you for who you are. So just be you. Just be you. And your homework is this, please. For everybody. I want you to get a piece of paper. And I want you to write this down. 
Okay, 10 times. I don't care about X. And then fill in the blanks. And so it might be, I don't care what, what people think of my, my, my hair. Kind of messed it up this morning. I don't care uh, uh, what, that, what people think of my age. I don't care what people think of my ethnic background. I don't care what people think of my sexual preferences in life. I don't give a damn what anybody thinks of, of, of my religion or who I am. I don't give a damn if anybody finds out uh, that I, at 49, absolutely love video games. And for my birthday present, I got a badass Alienware desktop. And all day on my birthday, I was trying to figure out with, with my kids, they're a bit older now, how to do GTA modded, GTA 5 mod. So it looks like real life. I, I just don't care. You have to be the same way as well. And you might think to yourself, Chris, that, that's, that's misinformation there. That's misinformation because I, I work in a big company uh, and it's very political. I get it. I've been there. I hate those, those uncomfortable elevator conversations when somebody senior was there. But you know what? The, the secret is this also. In big companies, senior people feel really uncomfortable when you're not yourself. They really do. You know, I, 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 I felt uncomfortable on both sides of that uh, that. that, that example there just be you and it's even worse because your peers when your peers see you not being yourself and you know what i'm getting at everybody when your peers see you not being yourself around senior people they lose respect for you as well and you should lose respect for yourself as well if you're just not yourself i'm, I'm telling you it's easier than you think to just be yourself don't try to be somebody else just be you and remember that everybody your entire life loves you for being you so you do you, you be you, because as Dr. Seuss said, I'm not going to butcher it this time. Dr. Seuss said, those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. And it's, it's very, uh, it's, it's very therapeutic as well to just be yourself. It really, really is. Uh, and if anybody's interested in learning more uh, about that, um, I, I made a course I just released. Um, it, it's free for now. Uh, go to my, actually, I'll make it free forever. Uh, go to my, um, People are like, Chris, I don't understand. How, how can you teach business and give free stuff away? Uh, I probably shouldn't be teaching business then. No, no, but go to my website, haroonventures.com, uh, and you can get that free course on how to vlog. Even if you don't want to vlog, uh, there are 28 uh, tips, 28 videos uh, that will help you uh, live your life in your own terms. So that, that vlogging course is applicable to all aspects of life. It's free. You've got nothing to lose, everything to gain. Uh, again, what you can do is go to my, uh, go, go to my website, uh, which is um, haroonventures.com, uh, which, which gets URL forwarded sometimes to harooneducationventures.com. Here it is here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then what you, you can do is uh, scroll down right here. Yeah, yeah. And click here. Um, it, it's it's kind of hard to notice, but this is new. <laughs> okay. All right, all right, what, what do we got next? I gotta get, get some water. Yeah. And if you give a damn what people think of you as, as well, like think about the best athletes in the world. If they cared that there's millions of people watching them potentially missing that shot, they wouldn't, they wouldn't be professional athletes. You know, they're very good at having horse blinders on and just tuning out the rest of the world. Um, for a great example of how that works, uh, see a great movie with Kevin Costner called For Love of the Game. And when he's up there pitching on the mound uh, for the Detroit Tigers in the, in the movie, um, everything else is blurred out. He doesn't hear anything. He's laser focused. Yeah. All right, next up, uh, Muhammad is saying, hey, Chris, hey, I have a question regarding XRP, which is the ticker for, for Ripple, uh, which is a, a, a cryptocurrency uh, geared towards uh, financial services companies. Yeah, and the founder lives not too far away from me here. You you wrote, what are your thoughts on it? Do you think the government can use it as an alternative uh, to cash? Um, so I, I think in general, and they've gotten in some hot water recently uh, for lack of disclosure purposes and insider selling. And the problem with cryptocurrencies is that they're regulated by mathematics, but they're not regulated by governments. Uh, as a result, um, there, there can be a lot of scamming going on. And 
I love cryptos, but I think that over 90% of them are absolute scams. I made a great course, humbly, called the Complete Cryptocurrency Course. You can go to my website, Haroon Ventures or Udemy, uh, to download the course. Um, and when I first started making that course, I was really, really positive on cryptocurrencies. That's why I made it. And the best way to learn something is to teach it, by the way. Uh, and so I was a 7 out of 10 positive when I first started making it. And then by the end of the course, I was a little bit disillusioned with it. I was negative on cryptos, only 3 out of 10. Um, um, less positive because so many people get scammed. The problem is that, there's again, there's no government regulation. And so SC, there's no sec.gov uh, that, that's monitoring it. Uh, and so before you, and this is how I made that course. I'm going to show you a little, little tip, a little secret here. This is fun. But if you go to sec.gov, if you want to list on the United States stock market on the exchanges, um, you have to uh, file what's called an S1, okay? Which is like a 150-page book made by investment wankers, bankers, uh, as well as, as lawyers. That joke never gets old, sort of. It's funny, kind of. I don't know. But so, for example, if you enter in Facebook here, okay, FB is, is the ticker. Then what, what you can do is, um, let me actually go right back here and, and do it again, FB, and select the right one here, Facebook, yeah, yeah. What you can do for any of these companies is you can enter in S-1, okay? And S-1, again, is the IPO document uh, that these, these companies have and must file before they go public. Uh, and so this is the one here from 2012. Uh, this, this was first published February 1st, 2012. Uh, and then they filed many amended versions. And I remember because I participated in this. And I invested in Facebook in my venture capital firm when it was private. And when it was public, I've gone long it, short it. I know the story well. The way I did research uh, when I went public, at least, was I went here to the S1 and I read all about, that's how we say it in Canada. It's not about Americans. We, we read all about the, um, uh, the company here. Okay, you've got the risk factors, everything in here. Okay, this is a massive, massive document. Morgan Stanley led the IPO. It was a disaster of an IPO, and Goldman's probably happy. It was top right, not top left in hindsight. Um, and I could talk about why it was a disaster if, if you care later. Uh, but you can read about the management team, the, the risk factors, the financials, uh, et cetera. Uh, a letter from, from Mark, which may or may not be truthful. Who knows? Okay, I'll stop with the bad jokes. Uh, but the, the great thing about uh, S1s is you can, you can read up uh, on, on a company before deciding to invest. With cryptos, you can't do that. You can read the white paper, which is an esoteric 10 to 15 page PDF created with some mathematical stuff in it. You have to do your research. You have to do your research. And I teach you how to do this in a lot of detail in my complete uh, cryptocurrency uh, course. Uh, to get my courses, you can see right here, just click on that link there. Or don't, don't click it, sorry. Go to that website there, uh, learn.haroonventures.com to, to get that course. And if you have additional questions, uh, please let me know. Thank you. But I do think in the long run uh, that governments are going to have their own cryptocurrencies uh, that are kind of tied to fiat currencies they have. Fiat uh, means traditional paper-based old school currency. Um, and governments have had a, a, a monopoly for, for many, many years when it comes to uh, fiat currency or paper currency. And we know that monopolies are lazy and monopolies uh, don't innovate. There's no incentive to. Well, now there's finally competition and competition is always good for the consumer. And so I think governments are going to start creating their own cryptos and merging it kind of like a reverse fork process for you, you crypto people out there, a reverse uh, fiat forecast or fiat fork forking process um, so that you can get better security measures uh, and tracking systems when it comes to currency. Because it's antiquated. The, the dollar bills we use today are the same ones. They look almost the same as we used in 1933, which is nutty. All right. Next question I've got here is from Raphael. Hey, Raphael. He's one of my, my wonderful MBA students. Hope you know well, buddy. Uh, Raphael wrote, how are you? I'm great. Um, now, what are your thoughts on Dodge? Uh, D-O-G-E, Dodge, yeah, um, which you put in caps. Um, Elon Musk just tweeted about it, uh, and it went up big time. Yeah, uh, it's funny he just tweeted because he, I saw he released a tweet the other day saying he was going off Twitter for a little, a little while. Um, let me, I, don't, I don't even know. Elon Musk, Dodge. Is that the, the, the car brand even? Oh, Dodge Coin. Okay, I got gotcha. you. It surges after a one-word uh, Elon Musk tweet. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know much about it, sorry. Um, but um, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I'm not a fan of most cryptos. Please do your own research. Never rely on Elon or me or anybody 
when it comes to investment research. Always do your own research, please, before investing in anything. Don't watch financial television either, please, because the people there are very biased. When they interview fund managers, um, you know, money managers, they'll bias you into liking stocks they own. They even disclose what they own, but they're great salespeople. That's how they got to where they are. Uh, also, never watch interviews with CEOs before doing your research on the company because they are the best salespeople. That's how they got to where they are. Yeah. All right. Oh, my gosh. Bavik, hope all is well. Bavik was uh, my, my MBA degree student uh, last year. He graduated last year. Uh, he's from Mississauga. Uh, he's an uh, an expert uh, in Juniper and Cisco networking products and many others as well. Um, he he works at a company and their head, their clients are all hedge funds in New York. He's done incredibly well. Great guy. He moved to India um, about a year ago to see his dad, and um, because of COVID, he didn't have to come back to Canada to work. His boss is awesome. Let him work remotely because he's an A player. He's a good dude as well. He's interested in real estate as well. Bavik, I, I hope you're doing well, buddy. It's it's been a while. Uh, God bless you. Uh, and I hope your dad is doing well in your family as well. Okay. Uh, next up, Gregory. Uh, and Gregory, thank you so much for the, the message you sent me on, on mind maps. Uh, I'm going to incorporate that in the curriculum for my MBA degree program. Uh, Gregory is saying, a question. Apple is having their their shareholder meeting soon. Soon, What should an investor listen for? Uh, why did Apple put uh, Al, Al Gore uh, on the board? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Al, Al Gore's got great contacts here in the Valley. Uh, I've seen him here actually a, a number of times uh, at Kleiner Perkins when I used to go there. Uh, we used to invest in companies together in the venture capital space. Um, so he, he's been involved um, in the tech space here for a long, long time. He invented the internet uh, back back in the early 2000s or so. I'm just kidding. But he did say that. He did say at one point when he was running for president, I invented the internet. Um, but people kind of took that the wrong way. He's always been very, very techy. Um, uh, even his wife um, actually had um, ha had a hand in in, in, in in legislation to make certain media formats, um, if there's profanity, to put disclosures on, etc. So he's been ahead of the curve for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but he does a lot of stuff in clean tech and always have because of this movie, An Inconvenient Truth, uh, for which he got an Academy Award. God bless him for that. Um, but yeah. He just got great contacts. And quite often you see former government officials uh, on the boards of, of, of big companies um, because they have great contacts as well. Think about the network that Al, Al Gore has. You know, having, you know, grown up, his father was a senator. You know, he was vice president. He ran for president, et cetera, as well. Um, didn't win, but almost did. Uh, I think he got the popular vote. Um, so it makes sense to have some politicians on your board um, if they can help you. They have a great network great network and for those of you out there that run your own companies um, and 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 you 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 want to get access to government what you can do is call your congressperson in your district that's right or your your MP member of parliament um, if if you're outside of America um, you know they, they work for you that's right you you voted for them you can call them and get their help just ask I've done it many times before when you call uh, initially you won't get them live uh, you'll get something in their team, and then you can reach them eventually. I, I did that with uh, a great congressman uh, named Mike Honda, uh, and I had him over for dinner, et cetera. Great guy. He's no longer representing um, uh, districts here in, in California, but he was a congressman years ago. Good dude. Good dude. All right. Next up, uh, we've got uh, Charlie, uh, who's saying good morning. Uh, good morning, Charlie. Please comment on institutional shorting and the ethics of betting that a business will fail. Thanks. Yeah. What a great question. What a great question. I remember when I ran my hedge fund in 2008, um, I had a very good October. The market was down, I don't know, 30% or something. I was up 3 or 4%. And it felt awful coming into work every day and hoping that certain companies would fail. It felt, it felt dirty. And, and that's one of the many reasons I'm not in that business anymore. Uh, it just didn't feel ethical. But the financial purists those that believe in you know capitalism and darwinianism when it, Dar, darwin when it comes to survival of the fittest with companies they will say that an efficient market um where the weakest companies die and the strong survive is very good for capitalism longer term this is what they'll say i don't know if i really agree with it but it is what it is uh, and so an efficient market uh, includes people that can buy stocks to go up and also sophisticated investors that can bet against stocks uh, to go down. And by the way, if you're interested in the GameStop uh, debacle, GameStop ticker GME, 
go to my YouTube page and just do a search on GameStop. I vlogged about it last last week. Yeah, uh, but but people do believe uh, in certain financial circles that if you can bet against companies and and they go down because the fundamentals suck, then the strongest companies rise to the top in the top in the long run. And, and that's the essence of of capitalism. It, it is. It is. You know, the best companies win. Right. It's 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 competitive. It's it's cutthroat at times. I believe in capitalism, not extreme capitalism, but I'm definitely a capitalist. Yeah. Yeah. But for those of you out there that are thinking about shorting stocks, please be careful. Um, I recommend instead of shorting stocks, and for those of you in my MBA degree program, we're covering options in class number 89. Uh, but for those of you interested in shorting stocks, meaning betting against them, don't do it because you can lose an almost infinite amount of money. If you want to bet against companies, you can buy what are called puts which basically means uh, an instrument you buy a little bit of, right? It's, it's, it's not a massive investment. Um, and then if it goes up, you lose this, but if it goes down, you make a bunch. Yeah. But there's so much corruption on Wall Street. Like there really is. Um, and, and shame on you, Major League Baseball, for letting the New York, the New York Mets uh, sell out to Steve Cohen, who is uh, probably one of the biggest criminals in Wall Street history. But he has a lot of money, money talks. Unfortunately, it is what it is. And he hit them. He knew when to go in for the kill uh, to buy the Mets because Major League Baseball lost $8 billion last year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but but a lot. there are a lot of hedge funds that are very corrupt. If you see a hedge fund that makes money every month forever, they're corrupt. I promise you. I promise you. <clears throat> I've seen it. I've seen it. You you can't make money every month or every every day. Each month has 20 weekdays or 20 trading days, and you get fooled by randomness. If you do make money every single month uh, as a hedge fund, you're probably guilty of insider trading. That's right. I said that, and I believe it. I believe it, yeah. But there's corrupt hedge funds as well. And the interesting thing is that, and I've gone to jail to visit my friends that have gone to jail for, for insider trading. I've never done it. I never will. But when something bad happens to people I know, I run towards them, not, not away. It's just who I am. Um, but I've gone to jail to visit my friends. And, you know, sometimes they'll, they'll, they transact on stuff without really knowing they're doing it. And if you want, I can go into more detail uh, on the prisons I've gone to visit and what my friends did, which I never did anything wrong, uh, but what they did to get there. Uh, but the problem is this. A lot of times people are very, very rich and they're older and they get caught for something. And you think to yourself, that doesn't make sense. They're already extremely wealthy. Why would they do that? Because once a cheater, always a cheater. It's true. Same thing in marriage. Never trust anybody that cheats on their spouse. Back to hedge funds. So there's a lot of cheaters in the hedge fund industry. And they get caught just once and it's game over. But they've been cheating their whole life. A lot of them. A lot of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and the mindset of, of people in the hedge fund industry and why they cheat, it's part of it, and I, I'm not going to justify it, but I have friends at all the big hedge funds, whatever, and, and friends have gone to jail as well. And I've had good heart-to-heart -heart conversations with them when I go visit them at jail. Uh, and they would say something along the lines of, it's so expensive living here in New York City. And I fell into the trap of living above my means. You know, my wife and I, we have a, we have a kid and we want to send the kid to the best private school. Private school for preschool is 30 grand in New York. Um, and I just want to maintain that standard of living. That's probably one of the reasons why I did what I did. You always got to live slightly below your means. Always, always, always in life uh, and in business in general. Uh, but there's there's a lot of corruption on Wall Street. And I remember back in 08, it was crazy. You had certain hedge funds. I will not name them. You had certain hedge funds uh, that would hire actors to line up at banks, mid 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 sized banks in New York City. The media would pick up on it and say, oh my gosh, look at all these people lining up to get their money out of that bank. That bank is going ba bankrupt. Everybody shorts it. Yeah. So it's like a drive-by or SAC drive-by. We used to refer to it on Wall Street. Yeah. So it, it, anyway, um, hedge funds do serve a purpose, though, um, to, to make uh, the strong companies survive and, and the ones that are not strong not prosper as, as much. It, it's, part of, it's part of capitalism. Yeah. Okay, and you got to you should be long term focused. Everybody, when you bet against companies too, you know, never just say, "Oh, I think they're going to miss the quarter." It's that's dangerous territory. Yeah, 
And if you want, I can talk about the Securities and Exchange uh, Commission's laws uh, when it comes to insider trading. Yeah, there you go. I worked at Goldman um, and they, they certainly put the fear of God into us in the first two months or so in the training program. Um, they did a great thing. Yeah, and that's why there's not that, like, I don't think there's as, as many people from Goldman that do unethical things as there are from other firms. Yeah. Yeah. There's bad people everywhere, though. Yeah. And, and what kills me is, is what happened in, in 08 with, with these bankers, hedge funds, whatever. And a lot of these big banks got rescued by the government, a bailout package. Uh, meanwhile, the average person in America lost their house. I lived in a place called Burlingame in 08. Uh, and I remember the, the people on, on the right of us and left of us, they lost their houses. It was kind of like a ghost town, this little area where, where we lived. And the rest of America was like that as well. And so the banks got bailed out. Uh, and then two years later in 2010, whatever it was, these bankers gave themselves record bonuses. You know, meanwhile, the average person lost their house and it hasn't recovered since. It's total BS. It's not fair. And, and you know, look, I believe in capitalism for sure. I'm, I'm more of a libertarian. You know, that, that being said, I, I do think there should be government crackdown and fines uh, on those banks, you know, a, and create a massive pool of a trillion dollars from those banks payable over 30 years or whatever it is, which is the length of a mortgage usually. And that money should go directly to people that lost their houses in 08. Yeah, it's just not fair. Now I get the whole Occupy Wall Street thing. I get it. When I was on the other side, I didn't really understand it. Now I understand and I appreciate it. And I'm with them. All right, next up, um, Tyler saying, hello from the UK. I ho hope you're doing well. Um, uh, my, my grandmother actually, God bless her. I miss you, Grandma. Uh, she was part Irish. Um, that's how I got my, my green eyes, which is tough for green screen. That's why I suck with green screen because my eyes go all dark and stuff. I don't want to wear contacts. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, uh, next up, uh, Peyton is saying, "Let's let's go." Excited, awesome. I love it. I love it. Welcome, Peyton. Welcome, buddy. So, uh, and Peyton, uh, he just he was in the Navy, uh, and he left uh, recently. Um, he lives in San Diego, I think. Right? You're you're in Southern California. Great guy. He's in my my MBA program as well. Um, really, really good with cameras and technology and, and and investments as well. Yeah, yeah. Smart guy. Good dude as well. Enjoy every second with your kid at home, dude. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, he, he served tours uh, overseas, and thank you for protecting our freedom. And I mean that from my heart. All right, so so Peyton is, Peyton is saying here, give me one second. Peyton is saying, question. If or when a trillion dollar stimulus uh, gets entered into the market, and if there's going to be a huge market crash, some are saying 40%, where does the cash go? How will there be a market crash with that much in it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Warren Buffett, that's a great question. Great question. Um, so Warren Buffett once said, the New York Stock Exchange is the only store in the world where consumers sell stuff when it goes on sale. Think about that. People are so emotional when it comes to stocks. You know, the most successful billionaires I've worked for, I won't name which ones, but most of them are borderline Asperger's syndrome. Um, and that's one of the reasons they're good at what they do because they never get too excited when things go well and vice versa. They don't freak out. And for those of you starting your own companies, when things go really, really well, and you know I'm an optimist, but when things go really, really well, I, I don't want you to celebrate because when things don't go well, I don't want you to freak out. I want you to stay even keeled, level-headed the whole time, the whole time. So when a market when the market crashes, per your question, Peyton, um, people sell, people panic. There's a lot of tourists in stocks. They're renting them. They're not long-term shareholders. I get excited when the market crashes because I back up the truck and I buy. It feels uncomfortable, but you have to buy when there's blood in the streets, as awful as that sounds. You got to be, as Warren Buffett says, greedy when others are fearful, uh, as well as uh, fearful when others are greedy. Yeah. But if when the market crashes, everybody sells their stocks. And that, that's how, that's where the cash goes. Yeah, yeah. But on the other side of that, there are people that make money shorting as well. Yeah. So it's not a zero-sum game. All right. Um, and uh, next up, Bavik is saying, Chris, um, uh, with your, you have to ask, work like, oh, great. You wrote here, uh, at the beginning of this call, I start off by saying you have to ask for everything. Uh, Bavik graduated from my, my MBA program uh, last year. Great guy. Lives in India and Mississauga, Canada at the same time. 
Bavik, and he works in the networking section. Bavik is saying, with your, you have to ask um, methodology. It worked like magic for me last year. Uh, after asking multiple times to my manager, I got a, a, a break, increment stock options, a raise. Thank you so much, because you're, you're most welcome. You're, you're most welcome. That's music to my ears, that, I'm, that, I'm, that it, it works. The, the whole networking asking thing helps a lot. It really, really does. It does. God bless you, Bavka. I'm happy for your brother. Happy for you. Uh, and and I, I, don't know, I don't know if you ever answered my question. I asked you before if you're related to uh, Dharmesh Thacker. Uh, good buddy of mine works in venture capital here in, in the Bay Area. Uh, but um, no, I'm, I'm happy for you. Happy for you. So here's how you ask for a raise. The best way to ask for a raise uh, or a promotion is whenever you do a great job at work and your boss is in a great mood and your boss says, great job, congratulations, all that stuff. You got to strike while the iron's hot because life comes down to a few short moments. And that's one of them. What do I mean? What I mean is that you have to then say, thank you. I'm very humbled to hear that. Our team did a great job together. Do you have time for coffee or tea, whatever it is? And they'll probably say yes because uh, they're in a good mood and because you, you've got some clout because you're, you just did a great job. Um, and so you sit down with your boss and you start off by bonding first, like we always do, because relationships are more important than product knowledge. Then you talk about you know, how great the team is, if true and how, how much you enjoy being part of the team and how together we've accomplished a lot. Then what you do is you very naturally uh, pivot or move on to why you're meeting. And you can say something like this if it's true. As you know, it's very expensive to raise a family here um, uh, in the Bay Area. Uh, I wanna be able to provide as much as I can for my, my growing family and we plan to have more kids. Uh, and, and so I, I'd love to ask you, please let me know, what do I humbly need to do? What more value can I add? What do I need to do to be able to be considered to get promoted or a raise? And they'll tell you. And you write down everything they say, obviously. And then three, six months later, a year later, whatever it is, after they congratulate you again on a great job, you ask for a meeting. And then you, you say, I did all that stuff, give me a raise. Obviously, you say it more tactfully than that, but I think you understand what I'm getting at. Yeah, it works. And, and quite often, you have to ask multiple times before you get promoted. That's the secret, man. Like, if you guys all work with people that are one level above you and you're like, dude, how the hell did they get promoted? That is moronic. You know, I, I'm better than them. They probably asked multiple times, you know, in one-on-one -on -one confidential sessions like that. And what I also recommend that all of you do uh, to ensure that the probability you ever get fired goes down materially, what I recommend you all do is you sit down with your boss every three to six months and just ask, you know, how am I doing? Obviously, don't start the meeting that way. Be complimentary about the team, yada, yada, all that stuff. But say, you know, how, how am I doing? And just get feedback. Uh, and then is there anything else I can do to add more value to the team? And they'll tell you. And that way you won't be shocked uh, when it comes time to lay off uh, and you get let go. Right? It, this, it's as a hedge. It, it's strategic, what I'm saying. It's game theory. Your boss will tell you what you need to do not to get fired. You got to ask every three to six months, how can I add more value? And the way it works when, when companies downsize and let people go, you know, quite often what they do is, you know, they, they overhire uh, when times are good and then they over fire that they, they cut into muscle not just fat uh, and the way it works usually is human resources tells every manager to they need one head from each team they don't say it like that but that's how it works and quite often it's a board decision because the company is not doing as well as it should be and so they're, they're the, the board kind of votes on board directors not observers or board advisors board directors can sometimes vote on whether or not they should downsize and so that's what happens each group has to give up one head. Now, what I'm going to say next is controversial. And I have upset some people by saying this before, but I don't give a damn because you, my student, you're the customer, nobody else ever. I think you should have friends that work in HR. And I think that HR, what happens, uh, and I've seen this happen when I worked at, at, at Goldman years ago, and I don't know if this is intentional, what they do. 
but whenever there's a round of layoffs coming, somehow everybody finds out before it happens. You ever notice that? And I, I, I think some companies do that on purpose. They let it leak a bit. You know, just it's, just it's a nice thing to do so that people that think they're at risk can leave or just get prepared. But it happens all the time, all the time. Okay, so if you work in HR, obviously don't do anything unethical like that. But a lot of times when you work in a big company and you hear about layoffs coming, 90% of the time it's true. Where there's smoke, there's fire. It ends up leaking. It ends up leaking. And for everybody out there, I want you to always have a plan B, just in case. You know, your, your, your number one focus is your family, then you, then the company. And I know that's not a very politically correct thing to say from a, a business teacher, but I don't care. I care about you and nobody else. My student, my customer. So whenever you get a call from a headhunter, take that meeting. You know, whenever somebody is interested in hiring and they recommend your name, take that meeting just in case I have a plan B. And by the way, if you're given these things in your company, if you have a budget, personal budget and leftover money, get the exact same phone, but make it personal. So you have two. Because any company, if they want to, if they want to let anybody go, they, they can find a reason by searching the phone that you gave them. You know, maybe you're sending email on company time or gosh, we monitored Chris was spending too much time on Snapchat. Yeah. I do look like an adorable baby though with a Snapchat baby thing my, my kids showed me. It's kind of funny. Man child. Yeah. But I always get one of these things. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. all I care about it are my students. I don't care about big companies. I don't care about anything else. I just want to protect you. That's why I'm never going to be sponsored by anybody. I'm, I'm in this for you, for you and to protect you. Yeah. Okay. Now we have to take a commercial break from our sponsor. This commercial break is sponsored. I'm kidding. No, no. I will never sell it. You guys know that. Never. Yeah. All right. Next up, uh, Benjamin is saying, uh, Chris, thanks for recommending uh, Damar Damadoran's book uh, in the last webcast. There's amazing value in those. Yeah, he's great. He's great. And so for those of you not uh, familiar with Damadorian, he's a wonderful professor, probably the best professor on the planet. Aside from, no, he's the best. But uh, he, he publishes a, a lot of textbooks. He's an NYU professor. Uh, most textbooks suck. They're out of date and they're theoretical, but Damadorians are good. Yeah. And I know that because I worked... Um, when I, when I worked at, at a big hedge fund um, called Citadel, uh, I spent half an hour one day one-on-one -on -one talking to uh, Ken Griffin, who's the, uh, uh, the founder of the company. Um, and I, whenever I meet with somebody successful, I look at their bookshelf, always, right? And it's sad because Kindle, whatever, a lot of people don't buy paper-based books anymore. But he had Damodorian books on his bookshelf. All right, uh, next, Nilsa, how are you? Nilsa's uh, from Puerto Rico. She's one of my wonderful uh, MBA students, extraordinarily well-spoken. Um, she's great, she's great. She's a Renaissance woman, yeah. And, and like me, she exercises while she works, except she has a bike below her. So every now and then I can see her shaking back and forth like this. But I love to walk while, I, while, I'm, while I'm working, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and so Nilsa is saying, thank you for the, for the vlog course. You're, and you were, I enrolled, you're most welcome. I just released it today. For those of you uh, uh, curious about that, I just released a course today. Go to my website uh, at, uh, or, or actually go here to this, this address here, learn.haroonventures.com. Scroll down, you'll, you'll find the course. It's, it's free for now on how to vlog. Um, and then uh, Nilsa wrote, uh, today I'm aiming for 20,000 steps. That's awesome. So what we do is we all challenge our, each other in the MBA degree program. So uh, Christina, um, she, who I've mentioned before, she's great. Uh, she lives here in South San Francisco. There's the water, Christina water challenge. So we all have to drink one of these every day together. Um, and, and then we tease each other over Zoom as well, um, see where we are. And then we all have to take steps. Um, so it's 20,000, for, for me, it's, I'm trying to do 20 to 30,000. Uh, sets per day. I, I wear this on my, my ankle. I know it's a weird place to wear it. I had to poke another hole. And the reason is because I've got this walker underneath me, this treadmill. Um, and what I do is I type a lot while I'm working. And if you're not moving your arms, you're getting gypped on steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, 
that and I, I guess I can't show it to you. It's underneath here, underneath me right here, yeah. But I usually, I, I, I make the desk go up, I push a button. Uh, this is a, a, a fully .com desk. This goes up, I move my chair off right here. Uh, and then what, what, I, what I do is I, I, I pick the chair off and then I take, take my steps, yeah. All right. I just got a new, uh, I gotta show you this chair. I'm, I'm a nerd, I like it. It's a video game chair. It's made by Herman Miller. It, it's matte black. Is that dope? Beautiful chair. I, I, I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, you gotta get black stuff in the studio too, so you, if it's gray or whitish, it, it, it can get picked up in pictures and I, or in the, in the, in the video, and I, I usually wear black, so. All right. Good, good to see you, Nilsa. Okay. Uh, uh, Manas wrote, uh, oh, hey, Manas. I wrote, uh, good morning, my, my dear mentor. Thank you. Uh, Manas is from India. Um, and then Manas wrote, I, I, I know I'm the only one who addresses you by that name, Chris, please. Uh, a very happy birthday to you. Uh, and then you wrote, oops, belated birthday wish uh, and lots uh, and lots of success and blessings forever. Thanks, Manas. I appreciate it. Then you wrote, uh, so how's life going? And I hope you're working on, on something interesting. I am. I am. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm, sort of turning this this studio here uh into uh a television studio so on on monday monday tuesday thursdays you know i i teach i have one-on-ones all day long with, with my students um and then wednesdays and fridays uh, my, my my new secret project it's not a secret now is to kind of turning this into a studio and you, you guys saw at the very beginning of today's webcast um i had that that intro uh, which was um a video filmed by Adad and, and Matt Lacuse, my chief creative officer, a brilliant guy, put it together as well. Um, we're sort of transitioning into a, a, a media network as well. Um, so what I want to do is I want to be able to talk about current events here. I'm an army of one. It's just me here in this room at all times. Uh, I use pedals to operate everything, as you know. And so what, and I've got robotic arms I'm working on as well here. It's, it's fun. I'm, I'm a gearhead, a bit of a nerd. I get it. Uh, but but that's what I'm doing next is turning this into a, into a, a media a studio as well, so it's HBS meets CNBC, two thirds of HBS is BS. You can't say that about Haroon Business School though. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, and then you wrote here uh, uh, just a wild question like, if you had two minutes and twenty seconds and you had to sell a pen that never belonged to you your employer uh what would have been your action yeah yeah wolf of wall street I, I get this a lot um and my, my my canned answer is usually along the lines of you don't need a physical pen uh, all you need um is a stylus or your finger uh, and then what i do is i try and cross sell subscription services um which has good revenue visibility uh, instead of just a one-time pen yeah all right. Uh, next up, uh, Abby is saying uh, hi, everyone. Greetings. Uh, hope you're all doing awesome, Abby. Great, great to see you. And I, I, I put I put you up there a little video of you earlier today uh, in in the webcast. Yeah, yeah. And thank you for the the birthday greetings as well. God bless you, buddy. Thank you. Jack is saying hey, guys. Hope everyone is great. Jack, nice to see you. Nice to see you. The first time I've seen your name here. Uh, welcome to the call. I hope you join us again as well. Thanks. And my mom's name, uh, my mom name, mom's name is, is, is Jacqueline, uh, and people call her Jackie, and a lot of her good friends call her Jack, and they can't say hi to her on an airplane. Bad joke, sorry. Hi, Jack? No? Sorry. Thanks, Jack. Awesome to have you. All right, Manas wrote, uh, Elon Musk, while hiring some of his employees, asked them this question again and again, which is, why is science still working? And then you wrote, I, I thought about it, but couldn't figure out an answer. Can you help me with this, please? Yeah. Why is science still still working? Yeah. So I I, I, I have a good friend uh, named Vas Kodali. He's a senior vice president at Wells Fargo, one of my great friends. And when he was in school, his teacher in Michigan uh, was, um, was uh, Larry Page's father. You know, God bless him. I think he passed away. Um, and uh, I know Carl Page, good guy, Larry's brother. Uh, and so uh, Vass and Carl uh, told me that his dad would always say that without data to back up 
something. It's just an opinion and a dream and nothing more. So you need to have the science of data backing up any thesis you have. Kind of like when you're doing investment research uh, on a company. You can't just go with your gut and look at all the great qualitative aspects of the company. You have to quantify it as well with data. How so? By looking at the size of the total addressable market and creating a financial model as well, which I teach you in great detail in my MBA degree program. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, next up, uh, Benjamin is saying, what's your opinion uh, about differentiating between a bear and a bull market beta uh, when valuing a company? Is it more useful or is the overall beta just nothing? Great question. So for those who are not familiar with those terms, um, a bull market means the market is going up a lot, um, kind of like running with the bulls. Uh, a bear market means the market's awful. Just think of that scene with Leonardo DiCaprio uh, at the beginning of The Remnant. Bear market bad. No, you'll never forget. Um, and what beta means is it's, it's calculus. And this is the only time calculus is going to matter in your whole business career. I promise you. Um, but it basically means the rise over the run or the rate of change of a stock. Let me explain that in simpler terms. So just accept the fact that the S and P 500s beta is one, just accept it. Okay, good. If a stock has a beta of two, it means it's twice as volatile as the S&P. So if the S&P 500 goes up, say 10%, a stock with a beta of two will go up twice as much, 20%, right? And it it's not a perfect science, but this is how it works. And if a stock has a beta of 0.5 and the S&P goes up 10%, then the, the stock with a beta of 0.5 will go up 5%. So a beta below one means less volatile than the index. A beta above one means more volatile than the index. Now, when I used to manage money at hedge funds, I would love to juice the portfolio uh, by buying high beta stocks when the market was on fire. However, when the market wasn't doing well, I love to be long low beta stocks and short the high beta stocks. So that's... That's basically how it works. Um, high beta stocks, if you do research on them, and don't just look at the beta, look at many other things, of course, but uh, high beta stocks, if the market's doing extraordinarily well, um, high beta stocks tend to more often than not go up a lot more and vice versa. High beta stocks go down a lot more if the market sucks. And so people like to own high beta stocks or more speculative stocks when the market's doing well but people like to own low beta stocks or low volatile stocks, low risk stocks when the market's not doing well. Okay. All right. Um, and that all comes to play when you use DCF as well to, to value your company and calculate the weighted average cost capital, which, which I talk about in my courses too. Yeah. Next up, Manas is saying, uh, do you see Apple in the next two decades. Okay, so okay, so how do I see Apple in the next two decades? I love Steve Jobs, but a Apple is losing uh, its uh, USP uh, day by day. Uh, I think we will not have Apple in the next two decades. Sad, but sour truth, your thoughts. Uh, no, I think we will have Apple. Uh, I, I, I think it's, you know, it's even slower growth company, like companies like Hewlett Packard, which, which has been in secular decline for decades, is still a rant, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think we'll still have Apple. I, it, it does bother me, though, that innovation has kind of died there. And look, I use Apple products. I, I get it. And I love their customer service. A company is only as good as their customer service. And you'll always be able to charge a premium price for good customer service. I believe that. Uh, but when it comes to innovation, Apple certainly hasn't done much since Steve Jobs, God bless him, passed away. You know, they, they've made a smaller version of this, a bigger version of this, a bigger iPad, smaller iPad, a cheese grater computer, which looks like a cheese grater. I have it. It's fine. Whatever. Um, Apple TV, which really hasn't done anything groundbreaking. Um, so, yeah. I, I just think innovation dies whenever a founder leaves a company. And I hope that Jeff Bezos stays somewhat engaged uh, with, with Amazon. Now that he's sort of stepping aside. And, and I know I'm going to get the question on what do you think of that. Um, well, uh, Andy Jassy, who's going to be the new CEO by the third quarter of 2021 at Amazon, he's a logical choice because he's the guy that created Amazon Web Services, the cloud division of Amazon, 
which is the real driver of growth for that company, not the retail business. Yeah. Yeah. But if would I be surprised if innovation slows down at Amazon over the next decade because uh, Jeff is kind of stepping aside a bit? I wouldn't be surprised. No. Yeah. I mean, thank goodness he's staying. The way they articulate the street was brilliant. They, they released earnings, which were amazing. Um, and then they then they mentioned um, later on by in the third quarter, you know, six months from now, whatever, Jeff Bezos is still going to be with the company. Don't worry, but he's not going to be CEO. And by the way, we're going to bring in Andy Jassy to do it, who runs this awesome AWS or Amazon Web Services division. Yeah. Okay. Next up, Ron Stoppable. Oh, I love that. What a great name, Ron Stoppable One Hundred Seven. Ron Stoppable One Hundred Seven is saying, hi, Chris, uh, I've been going through your business plan course. Uh, what is your advice on starting a t-shirt business? Should I create an LLC and a website or use a platform like, like Teespring? Yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm, um, so yeah, write the whole business plan first. Make sure you understand all the risks. Um, it, it, it's a tough gig, uh, the, the, the clothing business. It really, really is. Um, if you're going to, if you're making money and you're, you have a lot of expenses as well to offset the revenue, then definitely register the company. Uh, in terms of an LLC, uh, probably makes sense. But what I recommend doing, I'm not a lawyer, is uh, going to LegalZoom.com. I'm not sponsored ever, never will be. But go to LegalZoom.com and talk to a, a lawyer there. I, I use them all the time. They're great. They're great. Yeah. In, in terms of using Teespring, um, I, I really think their products suck. And, and I know I'm talking about talking out of two sides of my mouth because you can go and buy a shirt from mine right now from Teespring on YouTube. Just scroll down. I think you'll find it there. I put it on there because I wanted to teach uh, my students actually how to make money off of YouTube. So it was kind of a case study. I'll, maybe I'll take that down soon. Whatever. Don't buy my merch, please. Um, now, this merch here, it's high quality. Um, I get it from another company online that only sells uh, in the United States. Um it's a tough gig. It's a tough gig, unless you do it in bulk, right? Yeah. And then there's also the copyright issues. Like I remember I had a shirt that said the complete YouTube course um, and, and there was like a YouTube logo somewhere and they wouldn't do it. The, these other companies, I'm not going to name them, the, the shirt, because I didn't own that logo, right? I, I own this logo here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Michael, how are you? Uh, Michael is, uh, is, is from Sonoma. Great guy. He runs a not-for-profit. Awesome guy. Awesome guy. Uh, Michael is saying, good morning, Chris. I, I hope your morning is going well. Uh, likewise. And then you wrote here, take a drink of water. Thanks for the reminder. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then Michael said, um, I just want to give you a, a quick update uh, on of where we are uh, with the nonprofit. Yeah. And by the way, thank you so much for your, your donation uh, to my, my nonprofit. Uh, on that website and, and that wonderful note you wrote. I, I read it and thank you. God bless you. Uh, and then you wrote here, next week I'm going to submit the tax-exempt application for both California and federal. Uh, we had our strategic planning meeting for 2021 on January 16th and we'll hold our first official board meeting on February 13th. Awesome, dude. Nice. And then you wrote, um, our plan is to record content to our website and YouTube channel uh, on March the 6th, uh, thanks to what I learned in your awesome uh, YouTube video classes on Udemy. Then you wrote, take a drink of water. I'll do that as well. Thank you. And hats off to Sasha Stevenson, who co-taught that course with me. She's way better than I am at that stuff. Yeah. Thank you. New rule. I only, I only drink when you guys tell me to. How, how about that? Uh, and then Michael wrote here, thank you so much for, for all your assistance, your incredible courses, uh, your ever-inspiring uh, weekly office hours, and most of all, thanks for being you. Thank you. God bless you. And then you wrote again here in, in brackets, take a drink of water. Okay, here I go. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Congratulations. Congratulations. Very, very cool. Very cool. And as, as I've, I've said many times with you, um, uh, uh, if, if you want to, um, uh, and, and somebody just donated money, thank you. God bless you for that. Um, thank you. Uh, that, will, that will go to good use. Thank you. Um, if you wanted to get uh, access for anybody in your charitable organization, any of your customers in your charity, et cetera, to all my courses for free, you know, you can always ask them there for your brother. Yeah. But great job on, on the progress. And, and it's always great to see you, man. Always great to see you. Thanks. All right. 
All right, all right, all right. And, and then uh, Kupes1 is saying you change your background. Yeah, I, I do every week. Every week I, I, I change it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, Mehdi is saying, what do you think about watches uh, as an investment? Yeah. Um, there's a, a lot of, it, it's really interesting. Um, I have a good friend named uh, Gene Chung. Uh, he was at Morgan Stanley for years. I was his client when I worked in the hedge fund industry and he's been collecting watches for years. Um, and it's a, it's, it's a great business to be in if you know what you're doing, which bought, which watches to buy. Um, it, it all, and I know nothing about the industry, but I'm going to, I'm going to guess here because I collect baseball cards. I still do. And I always will forever, but it's all about supply and demand. You know, you, you got to look at the, the, the supply of cards uh, and comic books as well. Uh, and, and that's why in the 1990s, the, the cards industry and the comic book industry sucked because there's oversupply in the eighties and seventies. It was cool. Nineties sucked. It's getting better now because the whole space got consolidated. The Topps Corporation basically bought up everybody. And all these posters I have behind me, by the way, uh, are, are from uh, the Topps Corporation, right? These are these are prints. Some of them are not. Um, I've got a, a one here of Dwight Gooden, which is the only copy that's fallen off the screen there, whatever. Those are investments for me uh, as well uh, because that's that's one of one. That's the only one that's ever made of, of that one that I should probably take better care of it, yeah. So if you're going to go into the watch business or any business for that matter uh, where you're, you're you're selling products or investing in products, um, just make sure you understand this, the underlying supp supply um, uh, characteristics. Same thing with cryptocurrencies. A lot of cryptos are loser investments because there will never be a limit on supply. So I'd make sure you, you, you understand that as well. Yeah. All right. And then uh, Navita is saying, hey, Chris, uh, why do you have a blue background most of the time? It looks better with me. Um, and the head of my alumni association, great graduate last year from my MBA program uh, named Jason Blythe, uh, he brought it up. He said it looks better and I trust his opinion. I like it better too. It's blue. My, my favorite colors are blue and green, um, which is why you see it um, right here. I'm not going anywhere, but that's why you see it that way. Uh, but but for me, I just, I, I, I like blue. I, I It just, I don't know. It's one of my favorite cover, colors because the Blue Jays too. You see, that's an opening game ticket for the Blue Jays. Let me show you this thing here. All right. So this here, this is the first game the Blue Jays ever had. And my son, uh, Dylan, saw it the other day. He's like, Dad, oh my God, it was only three bucks. Yeah, yeah. I was like, you know, it, it, that was that was a lot of money for me back then in the, in the 70s. Yeah, it's a big deal. Uh, and I also told him, and he sort of believed me for a second. I said, I said, yeah, and back then tickets were really, really big. We were not that environmentally friendly back in the 70s. Yeah. I love my Blue Jays, man. Okay. All right. Uh, next up, uh, Manas is saying, uh, you know, sometimes I do feel uh, that that what would have what would have happened to me if you wouldn't have been uh, my mentor. Uh, I think your relationship with me is like that between Buffett and Gates. Uh, I pray that our relation continues to prosper in the days to come. Thank, thank you, Manas. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, and great job on your your Udemy courses and getting them up and running and stuff too and your books at such a young age. And, and God bless you. I'm, I'm humbled to hear that. Thank you. Sandra wrote, thanks, Chris, for the answer to your question. You're most welcome. Uh, next up, uh, Hamal is saying, hey, Chris, uh, thanks for all your teachings. Uh, you're, you're most welcome. Thanks for the support. Um, and, then you, and then you wrote here, I'm loving it. Uh, hi, everyone. The Third Door by Alex uh, Benayan is a recommended book for networking and finding opportunities. Okay, cool. Thank you. The Third Door. Uh, by Alex uh, Benaya. Thanks. My favorite uh, networking book, uh, and I have my own, which is free. You can go to my website, haroonventures.com to download it. Um, but my favorite networking book um, is is called uh, The Startup of You, and it's written by Reid Hoffman, who's a co-founder of LinkedIn. Um, and it's, it's, it's a great investment. I think you guys should all buy it today. Um, if you don't have time to, to read it, listen to the audiobook version. Yeah, it'll help your career from a networking perspective, I promise you. And you can learn a lot more about that from Reed Hoffman, obviously, than from me, because Reed's the man. Okay, next. Oh, dude, Kaz Kazunori uh, uh, Nishimura-san. 
Uh, Kazu, how are you, man? Uh, great to see you. Kazu was a, a graduate from my, my MBA program uh, last year. Wicked smart guy. Wicked smart guy. He's from Japan originally, uh, lives in, in Oklahoma, um, and he works uh, for one of the big drillers. I think Schlumberger, right? Yeah, yeah. So Kazu wrote, happy birthday, Chris, and long time not seeing you. Likewise, great to see you, man. You bring, bring your big smile to my, my face. Uh, and Kazu, let's let's see if you can you can spot where um, where Picasso is. He's here somewhere. It's a really really tough one to find. Maybe you'll you'll find him later. Uh, and for for those you're not familiar with what I'm doing, my MBA students, what we do is I have a little Picasso Lego dude, and I hide him, and my students have to find him. And Kazu used to always get it first last year. He's wicked sharp. Yeah. So you wrote, uh, what do you think about Amazon's future after the founder CEO uh, uh, well, uh, left? Yeah, yeah. So, so the question is, what are my thoughts on Amazon now that Jeff Bezos is stepping aside? So I, I think that the way they articulated it to Wall Street was brilliant. They had a great quarter. And then after the close, in the press release and during the earnings call, uh, they, they mentioned uh, that Jeff is going to be kind of still engaged but no longer CEO uh, by the third quarter of 2021. And the reason the stock didn't crash is because Andy Jassy is going to be the CEO. And Andy is the brilliant man. I've seen him present live many, many times. Very well-spoken, genius. Andy is the brilliant visionary that created Amazon Web Services at Amazon. And most people don't realize that the value of Amazon stock today is not just because of the retail stuff they sell when you and I order online. More importantly, uh, Amazon's uh, product called Amazon Web Services is kind of like the software platform that runs the internet right now. It's true. It's true. And, and what happened was in 2005, uh, Jeff Bezos realized, <clears throat> pardon me, in 2005, Jeff Bezos realized that he couldn't fulfill all the holiday shopping needs uh, for, for customers. And uh, all the servers would crash Amazon. So what he did in 2005 was he had Andy Jassy create um, um, a, a couple of buildings with thousands of servers running in them. And he turned them on so they can handle all that traffic. And then by January of 2006, <coughs> pardon me, hold on a second. By January of 2006, um, he realized, oh my gosh, we have all these servers that are on right now, all this extra computing capacity that we're not using. What do we do with it? And so he decided to rent it out. And he rented it out to a lot of companies like Netflix. And 95% of all computers at Netflix are actually at Amazon. Okay, They're in the cloud through what's called Amazon Web Services. And so that, that space was rented to Netflix and to many other companies, many other companies. And what happened was Jeff Bezos, who always believes in Walmart's EDLP strategy, EDLP stands for everyday low prices. What Jeff Bezos has done is he's made sure that the pricing point for Amazon Web Services gets cut all the time, over and over and over again. There's been over a hundred price cuts now. Um, and that's something you don't see in enterprise software. You know, at Microsoft Windows up until recently had not cut the pricing point except three times since the 1980s. So um, basically Amazon, what they did was they, they made the cost of computing so cheap by scaling Amazon Web Services all over the world. So that a lot of companies, they run entirely off of Amazon Web Services. And, and without Amazon Web Services, there'd be no Airbnb. There'd be no Uber. Netflix would still be a, a DVD subscription business, probably, who knows? It's true, it's true. So. Um, that has changed the world. It really has. And, it, and it's kept uh, inflation from creeping up. You know, Amazon is very deflationary, not just with the products you can buy online, you and I buy like consumer products, but more importantly with computing because they keep cutting that, that, that the price of, uh, of, of using Amazon Web Services. It's amazing. Uh, and so it's, 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 it's had the same plate, tec plate tectonic type impact on the markets globally uh, as the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989. How so? Well, in, in 1989, when the Berlin Wall fell, and, and the story I'm going to tell you is fascinating because this is, uh, Alan Greenspan uh, told me this, uh, and other people when I worked at Citadel, he was a guest speaker, not just me, a bunch of people. 
So what happened was back in, um, in, in 1989, when, when the Berlin Wall fell, we had such, according to Greenspan, incredible, uh, unprecedented uh, economic growth um, with low inflation in the 90s. Because when the Berlin Wall fell, you had all this really, really smart Eastern European labor that was cheap. All this smart, cheaper Eastern European labor moving west. And the biggest, um, the biggest expense at the time for any company was the cost of labor. And so the cost of labor was artificially low for an entire decade. So what? What does that mean, Chris, with respect to Amazon Web Services? Well, I wrote an article, actually. Uh, it, was, it was published in a bunch of places, including uh, VentureBeat.com. Um, but I wrote an article about how uh, Amazon Web Services is this generation's version of that Berlin Wall teardown event. Um, in that prices have become artificially lower because of Amazon Web Services. Yeah. Um, it's So anyway, having Andy Jassy taking over as CEO because he started AWS is the right call for Amazon. Um, does that mean that innovation is going to slow down at Amazon? You bet it is. You bet it is. Because Jeff Bezos is, is stepping aside. Of course, they'll still be innovative. Um, the corporate culture is is... It's like a small company mentality because every meeting that takes place at Amazon, you're not allowed to have more than two pizzas. It's called the two pizza rule. And which means that there aren't too many people in each meeting, which is a good thing because as we all know from school group projects or work projects, too many people in a meeting is freaking chaos, man. Yeah. So anyway, uh, Amazon's corporate culture is great uh, because it is like a, um, as an investor, not to work there, it's a tough place to work. Um, as, as an investor, it's great because it is like investing in, in many startups. However, no matter what anybody ever tells you, no matter what, and, and don't get seduced by valuation that's cheap in companies. But when, when, when founders leave a company or kind of step aside and become a little bit less engaged, innovation does slow down. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, and next up, uh, uh, Kupes One is saying, uh, Chris, uh, are you located in Canada or the United States? Uh, we should do a meet and greet uh, when COVID is over. I, I, I'd love to do, a, I have a lot of demand for that sort of thing, humbly. Um, I'd love to do some sort of event out here. Um, and I actually did it uh, just, I did it in January of last year. Um, I, I started doing it with my, my MBA students, um, Lamarck. Uh, one of my great students from the Philippines was in town. We met, and then COVID happened. So yeah, so I'm in I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, but I'm a, I'm a 905er. That's my area code. Growing up in Canada, I'm from Mississauga, which has a bigger population than San Francisco, but nobody knows it. Yeah. I know it. I'm proud of it. All right. Next up, uh, Manas is saying another kind of good news. Uh, I acquired a business yesterday, uh, 24 hours ago, uh, and I think and humbly believe that if will be a revolutionary because eventually we'll conquer the world. Probably a, a kind of a startup. Um, nice, dude. Nice. Here's what I recommend you do. Take my uh, complete business plan course. Um, you can, you guys can see all my courses here at the, this link. Um, and because failing to plan is plan to fail. And I, I promise you, your business will do better if you write a business plan first, always. And, and that goes for anybody in this call. You know, if, if you want to start a side hustle and you're frustrated in your current job, Write a business plan first, please. Most businesses fail. And writing this business plan might guide you down a different path to think about your business plan or business model in a different way. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, and then uh, Kazu wrote here, now I hit the right bulb uh, with why you make a comment on Amazon during our discussion. Okay, yeah, yeah. Amazing. I miss our talks, Kazu. Kazu is, is brilliant. Uh, one of the smartest people I've ever met. And, and Kazu, there, there's somebody like you in this year's class uh, named Jay, uh, who, who's, who's equally as brilliant. He's a, he's a doctor from New York City. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, great to see you, brother. Great to see you. Uh, and Manas is saying, Elon said WhatsApp is not that great, and WhatsApp lost 4 million people. It's funny, but true. Why? Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't use uh, what WhatsApp um, only because I don't trust Facebook. I, I don't. Um, I might use Weibo or WhatsApp occasionally if I have a friend from China or somewhere in 
in Southeast Asia that, that wants to get access to me. Um, yeah. But yeah, I do not trust anything Facebook touches. Yeah. And I do have friends that work uh, in the WhatsApp group. Uh, and they did say that Zuckerberg is, and Zuckerberg's brilliant when it comes to acquisitions. Like he's smart because he leaves the companies alone. And so my buddies that work at WhatsApp that told me that it's great. We were like on our own. Kind of like Instagram was on its own for 10 years after, you know, uh, Facebook bought them. And Zuck, all he wants to do is to see toward user growth, subscribers, and then he monetizes it later. You know, it's like feel the dreams. If you build it, they will come. And that's what, what the internet space is all about. It's all about getting subscribers as fast as possible. Because when Snapchat uh, initially did their road show here to try to raise money in Silicon Valley, you know, some sophisticated uh, venture capitalist said, I don't get it. Why would I want my pictures to disappear? I don't want my memories of my kids to disappear, pictures I take. And then a year later, he came by to try to raise money again, Evan. Uh, and, and he said, uh, um, he said, we have 6 million subscribers. And the same venture capitalists were like, oh my goodness, that's the best business model I've ever heard of. So it's all about subs early on, number of subscribers, then you monetize it later. All right, but Facebook had to buy uh, a WhatsApp, though. And, and Sequoia made over $3 billion on the deal. Um, amazing. They, they did incredibly well. And I love Sequoia. They're, they're great guys there. Um, and I partnered with them on, on, on deals before. Yeah. But they, they made, but they had to, Facebook had to buy them because uh, the problem with Facebook is that Facebook's Messenger products sucked for ages. Yeah. And they tried to build internally, didn't work. And so, you know, Zuck said, screw it. And he bought bought a company. And, and I do think that Facebook is one of the best companies on the planet when it comes to buying companies. Because the simple, the simple reason of Zuck buys it, lets them run on their own, hands off completely, lets them grow subscribers for like five or 10 years. Then he tries to integrate it. And only recently did Instagram get rebranded as a Facebook product. Yeah. All right, uh, and then Manas wrote, thank you for answering my question. God bless you and your family forever. Thanks again, and lots of nice emojis. God bless you and your family way more. Thank you. All right. All right, next up, uh, Navid is saying, uh, hi, Chris. I'm confused why we equalize shorting stocks as non-ethical. So my basic, and, and so, so somebody asked a question earlier to talk about the ethical side uh, of shorting companies. Um, and I talked about how some hedge funds are very corrupt. And what they did in 2008 was some hedge funds hired actors to line up in front of banks in New York City. And those banks, they were short. And so the media picked up on it and said, oh my gosh, everyone's lining up to get their money back. This bank is going bankrupt. Yeah. So that's why I say there's a lot of unethical things that may occur. Not in all situations. Not in all situations. You know, I, I think shorting should be legal. Legal, yes, it should be legal um, because it helps the markets become more efficient uh, in the long run. The short run, you get nutty volatility like you saw at GameStop, etc. And if you try to make money short term in the market, you'll get fooled by randomness, which is a great book by, by, by uh, Nassim Taleb. He was a, a fellow Lebanese. Yeah, um, But um, shorting should exist because it helps the markets to uh, be more efficient uh, in the long run. Um, because of, I don't know, corporate da Darwinism, so to speak. The strong survive. It's the essence of capitalism. Yeah. Okay. So you wrote here, I'm confused why we equalize shorting stocks is not ethical. Uh, by basic concept, if the market value is higher uh, than the intrinsic fair value, then it should be sold and shorted. Yeah. No, I agree with you. Yeah. I, I know, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. It does make the markets more efficient. Yeah. All right. Um, and that's the essence of capitalism. I mean, it's cutthroat, it is. I believe in capitalism, I love it, um, because I despise communism. Um, but no, it's the, the strong companies survive. It is what it is. That, that's why a lot, of, a lot of sectors or industries where governments give you a lot of money, um, they don't make it. You know, it's like a, like a spoiled kit that gets a, a very high allowance. They, they're, they're not gonna stand their own two feet. And, and a great example of this, a fascinating example is uh, in Japan. Um, so I, I used to focus on, on Japanese equities uh, when, I, when I worked at Goldman Sachs years ago. Uh, and then in, in the year 2000, in the year 2000, uh, uh, Michael Porter, who's a, a professor at Harvard Business School, brilliant man, 
he published this book called Can Japan Compete? And of course they can. There's a lot of great Japanese companies. But what he did was he analyzed the Japanese economy. He analyzed it after World War II. So after World War II, for obvious reasons, uh, the, the Japanese economy was, was in terrible shape. Uh, and so uh, what, what happened was um, the Japanese government created uh, all of these, uh, these subsidies um, for, for Japanese companies, uh, for every sector, gave them all money, except for two sectors. And the two sectors that didn't get a penny from the Japanese government were autos and consumer electronics. And there are a gazillion incredibly successful Japanese auto and consumer electronic companies, more so than other sectors uh, within the Japanese economy. Uh, and so I, I really do believe uh, in, in capitalism. I, I believe that the, the strong survive. Um, I, I believe that the markets are efficient in the long run. In, in the short run, it, it's, it's, it's kind of tougher because um, you get fooled by randomness. Random things uh, occur all the time. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> All right. Next up, uh, Navita is saying if util if utilizing long and short positions based on pure investing concept, long term, I mean, it's fair and ethical. Yeah. 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 I, I agree. I agree. Yeah. As long as there's no insider information and you're long term focused. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, next up, uh, Navita is saying uh, one more thing. And give me one second, guys. Hold on a second. Okay, uh, one more thing. Hedge funds as speculators is also part of the equilibrium as they act as a counterpart of hedges. Hedgers, otherwise, those hedging risks would not exist. Now, I, and then you wrote, please share your thoughts. Absolutely. I, I believe that the derivative markets should exist and that hedge funds should be allowed to short stocks. Um, and so, especially when it, when it comes to hedging exposure to currencies and commodities, so basically what happens is um, a, a lot of companies that have massive exposure to the United States dollar, um, they'll use FX hedging or foreign exchange hedging to mitigate or minimize their exposure. For example, there's a great German software company that I've, I've, I've met with many times. And I used to go to Waldorf, which is an hour and a half away from uh, Frankfurt. Uh, and so SAP has a very big percent of their revenues uh, for their software products. Um, a very percent of the revenues and earnings uh, from the United States. Uh, and so if the euro changes dramatically versus the United States dollar, earnings can be very, very volatile. And so what, F what SAP does, and a lot of great uh, global companies do that have exposure to foreign markets, is they hedge that exposure. Uh, they, they set up a financial instrument so that uh, if the dollar rises a lot versus uh, the euro or falls a lot versus the euro, it's not going to matter in terms of the earnings that they make and show the street. By the same token, companies also do this when it comes to commodities. For example, in the early 2000s, uh, Southwest, uh, which is a great discount airline in the United States with the ticker LUV, because their headquarters are at Lovejoy Field in Texas. Southwest Airlines, what they did in the early 2000s, was they, they realized, of course, that a big expense for them is oil. Uh, and so, so what they did was they, they actually um, hedged their oil risk or exposure. Uh, they hedged it a decade or two into the future at 30 bucks a barrel. So it doesn't matter if the price of oil went up to 150, which it did temporarily in the summer of 2008. They were still only paying 30 bucks a, 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 a barrel. Uh, and what they did was predatory. They, they actually cut prices. And that, along with a crappy economy, forced many of the the U.S. airlines uh, into bankruptcy. Yeah. But but bottom line is you, you can hedge your commodity exposure uh, as well as uh, hedging your FX or, or foreign exchange uh, exposure. And you can also hedge yourself when it comes to individual stocks. So there are people that work at very successful private companies here in the Bay Area. And those companies aren't public because they're private. And the 99.9% .9 of their net worth is in that stock. But that, that company, I should say, that shares in the private company. And what they do is they approach private wealth managers and investment banks to structure hedges for them. It might be a basket of stocks that they short that are in the similar sector so that if the whole sector gets crushed, they'll make money 
through those shorts with the publicly traded market stuff. Yeah. And by the way, for any of you that, that join a startup uh, and you have an option of getting uh, cash and options, of course, take some options. Otherwise, it looks like you're not committed. Uh, but take as much cash first as you can. Because if the company does extraordinarily well, and most don't, most startups, but if the company does extraordinarily well, they're going to give you more options anyway. Yeah. All right. Andrew, how are you? Uh, Andrew Dupree. Andrew, you, you mean Dupree? Uh, is is here. Andrew is the, the first student that ever got accepted to my, my MBA program back in August of, before we launched in even August of 2019. Uh, I met him in Mississauga when I went to visit my parents in Canada. He's a great guy. He's the inverse of me because I'm a Canadian living in, in America uh, and he's an American living in Canada. He's a great guy. Great guy. Good to see you, Andrew. I hope you're doing well. Um, and, and, and I hope to see uh, your son on the highlight reels in basketball. Andrew's son is uh, the, the number one prospect uh, in Canada. Uh, great basketball player. Yeah, yeah. Great to see you, Andrew. All right. Uh, and next up, we've got a Charlie who's saying, uh, my problem with the rich dad, poor dad theory is that there are not enough resources uh, to have everyone amassing the kind of wealth that rich thinkers amass. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I really do think uh, Charlie, uh, that small changes in our daily spending habits can lead to millions of dollars in the long run. Uh, and, and I prove it to all of you in my, my MBA degree program and my, my courses, which you can access at this link here. For example, if you make your own coffee every day, instead of you and your spouse spending, I don't know, five bucks a day on Starbucks coffee, that's over a million dollars in savings in 50 years. It's unbelievable. It's 1.6 million, actually. Uh, and if you want to, to run the statistics on that, uh, let me know. Uh, and, and I'll show you a vlog I made on that on my, my YouTube channel. Yeah. But small savings, tiny savings, can lead to an enormous increase in your net worth in the long run. Small changes. Really, really tiny changes. So, yeah. It all adds up. All right, uh, uh, Christina, how are you? Uh, Christina is, is one of my, my, my wonderful MBA students. Um, and she said, uh, good morning, Chris, cheers. Uh, I'm at the 9 a.m. water line. Let's see, she, she, Christina is the one that made the rule here. All right, good, I, I'm okay, I'm actually close to 10 now, I'm, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. But you wrote that an hour ago, I'm catching up with questions here. Uh, you wrote, uh, PABS number one is up, okay, and I've got two, uh, for, for those of you that took my MBA program last year, this year it's a little different because we're, we're moving them the goalpost out. We have two Pablo Picassos we hide here. It's like, where's Waldo? It's kind of fun. Uh, so Christina said, uh, good morning, Chris. I'm at the 9 a.m. waterline. Pabs one is upside down, uh, clipped to the back panel uh, in front of your head. Uh, yes, good. You're right. Excellent. And then Pabs number two is upside down uh, on the town baseball card upper right. Good for you, dude. I am blown away you got that. Uh, I, this was the hardest one ever. Uh, so you're right. You're right. So here they are. Here's one of the Pablo Picassos here, and the other one is under the Ricky Henderson thing here. Yes. Great job. Great job. And, and Kazu, who was my class last year, and Kazu was the Christina of last year, and Christina is the Kazu of this year. Kazu was the best at finding them last year. You're the best uh, so far, but there's competition. Here they are here. So great job. Great job. So, and here's what they look like. Picassos, yeah. Yeah. And I ordered another one. Um, there's this a wonderful woman artist named uh, Frida. Uh, so I ordered that. that. That's coming soon as well. So one of these pabs will be taken out of circulation. Yeah. And Pablo Picasso has a lot of great quotes. Look them up if you guys want to. Um, one of my favorite ones he said is, everything you imagine is real. Okay. Because he did a lot of drugs when he was painting. Just kidding. He probably did. Yeah. Don't do drugs, kids. Stay in school. Okay. All right, good good job, uh, Christina. That's awesome. Very very cool. Okay, uh, let's see. Next next up, uh, uh, oh, uh, Andrew saying uh, Tom Brady was quoted yesterday on on uh, winning and curbing your emotions. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, and and I have a one of my kids. His dad was Brady's best friend. They played football together, and you know Brady grew up around the corner here. And of course, I had to ask. I had to ask, well, 
were the footballs a little bit deflated? Yes. And they practice that way too. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. 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 But you're right though about Tom Brady. You have to curb your emotions. Yeah. Really successful athletes, a lot of them, and successful people in business, they can control their emotions. You know, never get too happy and things go well in business and vice versa. Otherwise, you'll panic at the worst time. And you'll, you know, as Warren Buffett said, the New York Stock Exchange is the only store in the world where consumers sell stuff when it goes on sale. Yeah. Curb your emotions. Yeah. All right. Next up, uh, Axel is saying hello, everyone. Hope, hope all is well. Axel, first time I've seen you on the call. I hope you join us again and welcome. Okay. And Dennis said, hello, Chris. Um, who's the person in your network uh, that was the most important for you? Yeah. Uh, for, for networking, I mean, there's been so many. There's been so many people that, uh, that, 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 that I've helped and they've helped me in return and have really guided me. But I'll, I'll list a couple of people that helped me the most in my life. Um, so the, the first one is a guy named Murray Cronick, um, who um, was my, my first manager. Uh, when I worked uh, at Accenture uh, when I was, I was a kid. Uh, and he really helped me a lot. He boosted my confidence and all that stuff. And I, and I wrote him a really good review. He didn't ask for it. Uh, the other day on LinkedIn, you, you can check out what I wrote if you want. Uh, another one is um, uh, Lisa Shallot, um, who uh, was a partner at Goldman Sachs. And I worked for her and she she was amazing. She was great. Yeah. Others at Goldman, Yumiko Murakami, Colin Stewart. Um, yeah. I've had wonderful. Oh, Carson Levitt, probably one of the biggest ones. He hired. He worked for George Soros. He managed. He was a top money manager for Soros in the '90s. He hired me um, at at two hedge funds, a Citadel and Pequot. A great guy as well. Yeah. Okay. And if I'm missing anybody on that one, I'm so sorry. If you're watching. All right. Uh, next up, uh, Juan is Juan is, is saying, "Hey, Chris, I want to say hi and how inspiring you are. Thank you, Juan. I appreciate that. Thank you. Also, I want to ask you about uh, why do you think Elon Musk wrote four not very serious tweets about Dogecoin? Uh, what do you think uh, he is doing? Is he kidding? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know. But but he knows, as do a lot of very successful people to be careful about market manipulation if you're profiting from it. Um, so, I mean, remember he mentioned before that he thought about taking Tesla private and the SEC was like, hey, wait a second, you're manipulating your stock. Um, and so he kind of backed off on that. So I'm sure that he's being careful of that. But he does a lot of things that are, like he's, he's brilliant when it comes to marketing, kind of like, like, like Kanye West. Of course, their, their approaches are, are completely different. But they're both brilliant. Um, you know, anytime you can get attention um, for yourself or your products uh, for free, uh, you're a marketing genius. And that's why I always say that when you start your companies, you need to be you need to be controversial sometimes um, in order to get free PR. Uh, and so Mark Benioff, uh, who's uh, just a wonderful humanitarian, beautiful person, he runs a sales force here in the city. You know, since he launched the company in 1999. He was always talking about how software is debt. And that was his logo, actually. Software with a line through it. Because cloud computing is better than software. That was controversial. Sir Richard Branson has done that over and over again as well. You know, when, when he launched uh, Virgin Cola, uh, he rented a tank and drove it into Times Square with a bunch of Virgin Cola on it. And he declared war on Coca-Cola. Now, Virgin Cola is no longer around. It, it, it didn't work out. But... He's very controversial. He's been like that his whole life. Um, so if, if you're if you are controversial and outspoken, um, tactfully of course, uh, it can be very very good PR for you. So for me, if I wanted to, uh, what I could do to get more attention for my MBA program, and I want slow manageable growth, but what I could do is I could say, I'm declaring war on Harvard Business School because two thirds of Harvard Business School or two thirds of HBS is BS, but not Haroon Business School. You cannot say that about Haroon Business School. But I think being controversial is brilliant from a PR perspective. Uh, and Kanye does that as well. He does, yeah. And a lot of these social media people, um, you know, like like uh, the Kardashians, for, for example, you, you think, my goodness, they're just, it's ridiculous. They're making money for doing nothing. No, it's, it's all very calculated. 
Hey, uh, what, what they do is, I'll speak for Kim. You know, I've got a lot of respect for Kim, especially what she's doing with, with prison reform. She's getting a law degree now. Uh, and she's going to reform uh, the prison system. God bless her. There, there's so many people that are in jail that should not be, you know, for stuff that I could have gotten caught for or because they're in jail because they had a deadbeat father. You know, there's no such thing as a deadbeat mother. And I go into the prison system uh, here in Redwood City in the McGuire Correctional Facility, and I counsel a lot of these poor kids. Uh, but God bless Kim. I, I hope she pulls it off. Yeah. But but a lot, a lot of these people that, that do these social media stunts, uh, it's, it is it is calculative. Right? And the same thing with, with Elon Musk. Even little things like the boring company he had with a flamethrower, that, that was insanely great PR for him uh, as well. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, next up, Christina is saying, thank you, Chris. I registered last night for the, for the free course. Oh, thank you, and I appreciate that. Awesome. And then you wrote, uh, I, I loved your YouTube. My new course called How to Vlog is here. Get it for free at haruneducations.com video posted yesterday. Thank you. No, I, I appreciate that. And for everybody that, that's wondering uh, what, what that means, uh, what you can do is just go to um, go to go to my website here, uh, Haroon Education Ventures. Um, here it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then here is, uh, it, it's kind of hard to tell, but this is new. <laughs> uh, you can get my new course on how to vlog. Just click that, that black button there. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to learn more about my other stuff, the MBA program, whatever, you can scroll through here as well. Yeah, yeah, thanks. All right, all right, all right. And then Juan is saying, uh, uh, oh, is it your birthday? Happy birthday, if it is made. No, thank you, Juan, I appreciate it. My, my, my wonderful students in my MBA program, they made, oh my God, it was the most amazing. Like, I, I teared up a bit. Um, they made this amazing video. Um, uh, from all over the world, all of them. You can go to my YouTube channel. It was posted uh, on February 2nd, which is my birthday. I had to repost it. It was, it was so awesome. Yeah. I got the best students, man. All right. Um, uh, next up, we have Mina, who's uh, one of my students uh, this year as well. Uh, and she's from Cyprus. Um, she's in the program. Oh, Mina, last night, um, uh, she loves video games. My, my son um, and I, what we do is we figured out uh, on my, my new badass Alienware laptop um, how to download all the mods for GTA 5. And it looks like real life. It is dope. And we inserted mods also so that all the signs in GTA 5 uh, are of real California places. Like Vinewood up on the hill says Hollywood. Um, it's, it's, it's incredible. And all the bill, the billboards, there's real ads and there's FedEx trucks driving around because there was, there's no in-game advertising because of PC issues, but all it's all there. It looks really, really cool. We got ray tracing the work as well, uh, which is fun. But we can't do online though; they won't let you. Yeah, yeah. If if you mess around with it, but I thought you'd find that cool. Uh, and so uh, Mina uh, said, uh, "Science is still working because of human curio curiosity. As soon as one question gets answered, three more pop up. Uh, and for a question to be answered, you need data and proof. Amen. Amen. And and Mina is brilliant." Um, she is great at qualitative and quantitative analysis as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and, and Mina, by the way, told me to, 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 to clean my computer. And, and she's totally right. At first, I, I didn't listen, but she's completely right. For, for And this could save you guys years on your life, aggravation, money, etc. Open up your computers and just, like, obviously power it off. Make sure there's, there's no static issues. And get rid of all the dust in there because your computer will be fried and it will stop working eventually. I actually bought a special vacuum, an anti-static vacuum as well for it. So thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and Manas said science is working because of frustration as people in general are more concerned uh, with finance. So science feels ignored. Uh, and then you wrote that. That's my way. Thanks. Yeah. 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 But it, it is amazing how the whole world has come together uh, to find a cure for, for COVID. It's astonishing, actually. Um, I wish it happened faster. But over 10% of people in California, that means over 3 million people, have already gotten the uh, uh, the, the antidote, or the vaccine. Yeah. Uh, and I'm on the list, too. Everyone's on the list. right? I, I registered, uh, but I'm 49, so it's going to take a while. Um, so they're, they're, they're giving it now to everyone over 65. But I'm on the front lines because I'm a teacher. Because I'm close to you guys. No, just kidding. No, no, real, real teachers uh, should, should get it first, yeah. Okay. 
All right. Uh, ne next up, we got Jason. Jason is saying, hello, Chris, uh, my best friend growing up. Oh, I forgot. Somebody asked me before about mentors in my life. The most important one. How could I forget? Well, my dad's first, obviously. The second most important one is, is Jason Denny, D-E-H-N-I, Jason Denny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a great friend of mine. He's changed my life so many times. It, whenever I'm confused and stuff, I just, I would always go out, grab beer with him and just get his advice. He's a, he's a great soul. Yeah. He has a great family too. Um, so Jason is saying, hello, Chris. Uh, hope you're doing well. Happy belated birthday to you. I hope you're having an amazing year. God bless you abundantly. Thank you, Jason. God bless you a billion times more. Yeah. Thank you. I love my students. Um, next up, Manas is saying, uh, Bezos is going. If you had a stake there, what would what have been your, your reaction? Oh, you got, yeah, and I answered that one earlier. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, and then we got something in French here. Oh, boy, I have to translate now. Manas is saying, Je suis uh, bien pendant ce cat catastrophic situation. I've, I've, I've been doing well in this catastrophic situation. <laughs> Il est très uh, dépendant à la personne. All depends on the person. Uh, thanks, just a wild answer. You're, you're most welcome. And Ron Soppable 107, thank you for that, that donation. God bless you. I appreciate it. It will go to, to good causes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Oh, Rose is here. Rose, how are you? Rose uh, was in my, my, my program last year. Um, she's amazing. Uh, my MBA program last year, She, for such a young age, she's incredibly well-spoken and a leader as well. Uh, and she made a, a yearbook. Um, and let me see if I can even find the yearbook. I, I've got it here somewhere. Urgh. Oh, here it is. Yeah. So she... Uh, and nobody asked her to, but last year she, she made a yearbook. And this year, um, I think it's Christina and a couple others are partnering on it in this year's uh, MBA program. But she made this. Uh, there is a, a glossy version and a non-glossy version as well. I got the non-glossy version here so you guys can see it. Uh, but I've got profiles on, on all the students in here as well. I wish I had my, my top-down camera. There's Dante from, from Ottawa. Remember him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, we got Mark. We had a million Marks. That's, that's Gordon Lizard. Do you remember him? Gordon Lizard with a bit of a suntan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't care what people think of me. It's liberating. You guys got to, you guys got to sign up for my new free uh, how to vlog course. Go to my website, haroonventures.com and sign up. It's liberating, I tell you, just being you. Yeah, with the crazy hair. Yeah, now, this was fun. There's Jason, a lot of Jasons as well. Yeah, oh, we had a blast. Manola, uh, Eileen Del Gracias who's uh, the best last name ever. Deo gracias uh, means uh, uh, thanks God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Bob Burgundy. Remember this guy? Yeah, he's kind of a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. No, we, we had fun, man. Had fun. Jason, who's in charge, he's head of the Alumni Association. Um, good dude. Good dude. He's got a, a great job in, 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 Japan, er, in Australia in the, with the police force. Uh, and then here we got uh, Mark, Dr. Mark. He's in the Philippines, and he also recently got a job offer from the United Nations to work in, in Somalia. Um, yeah, just a great group of students. Um, amazing, amazing. Rose, great to see you, and thanks again for, for, for creating this. Uh, you're a gem. Thank you. So Rose wrote here, the director of partnerships for the pod company uh, I use for my clothing line uh, is on LinkedIn. I want to message him and ask uh, if the company can partner for us. Um yeah, and, and uh, yeah, and your company is is called uh, Project Fruitful Standard, um, and I support you. And I bought one of your T-shirts because I know every penny goes to making schools in Africa. God bless you. And you wrote, "I want them to cover advertising, but I don't know how to ask." I read that uh, you have to provide uh, mutual value uh, in a partnership, but Fruitful Standard is a nonprofit, so I don't know how to how to approach this. Yeah, yeah. So w what I would do first, Rose, um, as we we talk about in the curriculum. Um, and your LinkedIn profile is amazing, and I, I love your picture of the astronaut. It's cool. I like it. Um, what I recommend doing is just getting a, a Zoom meeting first. Don't ask outright. I, I want you to get a meeting first and ask over Zoom or in person. Um, probably have to use Zoom now because of COVID. Um, but yeah, get them live um, and then just show your face and talk to them that way. Get them live. Yeah. Uh, and so... If you want me to help you get in contact with them to get a be able to get a meeting, um, let me know. Okay, let me know. Why don't you join our, our MBA students only office hours? 
um, today at, at 11.20 and, and ask me. And what you can do in that more private meeting is over Zoom, I can go to that person's profile page and I can find a way to craft up a way to get them to meet you. I promise you I'll make it happen. Okay. okay. Great to see you. Great to see you. Next up, we got Paul who's saying, uh, hey, Chris, it's Paul from Barcelona. Uh, just following your, your life or he's following you, you live while I'm working. Uh, it was great to meet you uh, during your time here. You have a wonderful family. I hope you're all safe. God bless you, Paul. Thank you. And it, it was a pleasure meeting you as well. Um, and it, it's funny. It's prophetic, actually. It's interesting, coincidental. But I just published a course today um, uh, that was based on that day when I met you in Barcelona. Because what I did was after I met you, I when I was walking home, it's so funny, I had my iPhone and I recorded 28 vlogs. And and I made a, a vlogging course out of it. I just published it just now. So check check it out. And it was great to see you. We, we went on a nice long walk together. One of my kids had a meltdown. Remember that? My three boys. <laughs> um, and, and thank you for the, the clothing as well. Um, so uh, the, the Barcelona Football Club and the orange one. I love it. I, I love, I should probably wear that one day on, on, on the air here. Thank you. God bless you. And my, my, you made me look really cool in front of my, my older kids uh, as well, because you, you gave me this, this cool football jersey and stuff. And I, I remember you, you had an internet company. It was kind of like uh, Expedia, sort of, we were talking about when we went in that walk. But it was a, it was a pleasure to meet you. Uh, and, and thank you again from the bottom of my heart for those, those gifts as well. Thank you. Very cool. All right. Uh, uh, next up, uh, Harsh is saying, uh, Sir, Chris, please. Sir, I'm procrastinating uh, important things. Uh, what should I do? Yeah, when it comes to procrastinating, um, I recommend a, a book called How to Stop Procrastinating, which I started reading, but I never finished. Yeah. Okay, the next question we have, um, and I'm, I'm totally kidding. I'm being an idiot there. Sorry. That's dad humor, okay? It happens as you get older. It has to be rated G because you have kids and stuff. Yeah. Um, okay, so w when it comes to procrastination, it, it might be because you're not busy enough. Um, and so if you want to get something done, you give it to a busy person. Uh, and so what I do is with my, my MBA students, I give them a, a very high-end version of what I'm about to show you, which is a daily scheduler. Okay. But the, uh, the, 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 the simplistic version, you go to my website, haroonventures.com, uh, and then you type in uh, schedule okay, or schedule if you're in England. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, haroonventures.com, lowercase schedule. Then you click here to download this, okay? Whoops. Oh, here it is. It, it got downloaded. It's in the corner here. Okay, good. And what you can't see underneath me is that the PDF just got downloaded on another screen. Let me bring it over here. Ah. I have 8 million monitors going on today. Okay. These are all my one-on-one -on -one meetings later today. Sorry. I just screwed up the wrong window. This one's coming over now. Hold on. It happens, man. I'm telling you, when you get older, you, you have tech issues. I feel like my mom with the VCR. Here it is, coming over here. There we go, good, okay, great. All right, so you, you can download this um, and it's basically just a one pager where you write down your, your goals throughout the day. And, and I wrote here, please note, this is the format I use. Please delete or change the text in this document to fit your daily needs. Um, just, yeah. So. It, and you can download this in PowerPoint. It, it'll probably work in Google Slides and other apps as well that are presentation applications. So what you do is you schedule each day, okay? And you schedule each day um, before you go to bed, okay? So for tomorrow, um, I would write this, this entire thing today by 9 p.m. And, and put it by my sink. So it's the first thing I see uh, when I get up in the morning and wash my face. Um, and so you, you can print this out, do it by hand or, or type it up. Um, this is kind of an old one for me, uh, but I had hard coded always here, Jim, and I would check flags in my emails back then. I'm a little bit different the way I do things now. Um, family time for four hours, which means three hours, um, and then bed. Okay. Uh, and what I'd also do is to do my to-do list up here. Um, and then this was, this is old. This is for, you know, in Q2, complete the cryptocurrency course, make the complete finance course in Q3 and then whatever course. Um, and then here is, did I send out certain promotional emails, educational announcements, LinkedIn, YouTube, whatever. And then other to-dos here. And then up here, uh, I would write the day number and the date. Um, and at the end of the day, what I would do is before I make the next day's schedule, 
what, what I would do um, is I, I would actually score myself. So I'd take 10% off for each meeting I didn't go to or if I didn't get enough steps, et cetera. Uh, and it, it's hard to see, but on the bottom right-hand corner here, uh, right by my elbow here, uh, I, I would put a score out of 100% on my accomplishments that day. And I would go through here, and this is kind of personal, but for me, you know, the most important thing is God. Did, did I say prayers uh, up at the top right, right here? Okay. Um, and then uh, did I put family first as well? Diet, um, uh, weights, um, did I get seven or eight hours sleep a night? Did I wash my face twice? If I don't, it's a disaster. <laughs> did I get 20,000 steps in, which means 10,000? Did I check my body mass index? Did I put customers first? Did I not surf the internet too much? Did I not spend time on emails? Did I plan my meals? And then, yeah, rinse, lather, repeat. Do, do it every day, except on weekends, because you drive yourself crazy. Uh, and then in the MBA degree program, which you can find out more about from this link right here, I have one that's it's much more higher end. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and, and I promise you that that if, if you do that, uh, you, 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 you will stop procrastinating. You'll get a lot more done. But you got to set deadline dates for everything you do, all your goals as well. And you got to vocalize those goals because if you don't, um, then there's no one to put pressure on you. And I mean that with love my heart. There's no one to put pressure on you out there. You know, if, if, if I tell people I'm going to write a book uh, and I provide a deadline date, every time I see them, they're going to say, so how's that book coming along? Yeah. The bottom line is, um, if you want to get something done, schedule it and give it to a busy person, which is you. And we all know what that's like. You go on vacation and you're like, oh my God, I need more out today, but I have nothing to do. Yeah. You're just not a good steward or manager of your time. Or at least I'm not when I'm not busy. All right. Um, all right, moving on down here. Uh, and Kazu wrote, uh, you will have a smarter new cohort. Yeah. Well, Kazu is one of my amazing students from last year's MBA program. This year's class is, is amazing too. They're, they're both equally brilliant. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah. They keep pushing me to be a better version of myself as well. All right. And we have a wonderful sense of community as well. Um, yeah. And, and you guys passed last year in terms of the new class, in terms of using Slack. Yeah. Like 100 and, 120 or something on there. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um all right, and, and then Rose, if you want, you can join me for MBA only office hours. I'm happy to go through that with you uh, in a lot of detail as well. Oh my goodness, look here, we, we have Julie. Julie, I hope you're doing well. Uh, Julie lives in Germany. Um, she moved back home to Pennsylvania with her family uh, and she and her brother have a solar company now as well. She was a graduate from last year's uh, MBA degree uh, program. She's awesome, she's funny, she's cool. Uh, so Julie said, uh, and she, she worked at Goldman the same time I did back in 03. And she started was one of the people that started Community Teamworks at Goldman, which is their, their not-for-profit group, which, which is awesome. Yeah. And so Julie wrote here, hey, Chris, I want to wish you a belated happy birthday. Thank you. It's so awesome to see you uh, living your passion. Thank you. No, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um, it's been fun. It's been, it's been a fun year so far. Yeah, yeah. It's going by fast, man. Dude, the older I get, the faster time goes by. Like when I was a kid, I remember I'd be in class and I'd be staring at the clock. Oh my God, please. I can't wait for 3.30 to get out of here. Um, time would go by slowly. Now it goes by fast. Like decades go by like that. Yeah. And you can only be happy now. Yeah. We got we to gotta live in the moment and stop to smell the roses all, all the time. And I know you're laughing inside when I mentioned roses because I talked about, remember that one time I made you laugh really hard during the program where I talked about buying my wife that, Mother's Day gift, not not the flowers, but the the Doctor Phil book on the coffee table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I told my recent class about that as well. That they had a good laugh at my expense. Okay, cool. All right, Nasamina is saying, uh, Chris. By the way, my baby arrived today. Oh, your computer, good. My baby arrived today, and I built it back together, and I can't stop squealing. Uh, Mid uh, is is so pretty. Uh, Mid is your desktop. For okay, cool, nice, nice. I love my computer too. I, I love computers in general. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Um, when I was a kid, they thought I had a learning disability. Um, and so they sent me to this learning disability center on, um, in, um, uh, in Oakville, Ontario, uh, on Lakeshore Road called Chisholm. And it, it turns out I didn't have a learning disability. And they wanted to fail me a couple of times, those bastard teachers. That's right. Um, they asked me to come back and guest lecture. Never. I'll never give them airtime. 
Um, but my, my dad, mom and dad are the best. What they did was they, they figured out that, you know, by the sixth and the eighth grade for me, whatever it was, that I just wasn't passionate about school. And uh, I learned differently. And so my dad thought, well, you know, Chris is using a typewriter to, to make his reports, which is, I, I am that old. And so he bought a computer, an Apple, or it was a Mac Plus, which I still have. And that changed my life. Because I realized that I love to create with, with software. It, it was just it was just fun for me. Um, and I've got, I want to see if I've got that here. Give me one second here. I, I love creating with, with software. And so this is a prop for one of my, my MBA classes, MBA degree classes. But I enjoy creating with software. It's fun. You know, like I'm Bob Ross. I've got some couleurs here as well. Couleur is spelled C-O-L-O-U-R. It's not O-R. Americans spell like Canadians, please. But I just, I, I love software. And, and I love using a computer. It was just fun for me. Uh, and so that's my palette is, is software. Like when I make Excel files, which I love doing, you, a lot of you have seen it. I feel like I'm an artist, not a very good one, but it's just fun to create. And then my grades got a lot better because of that, because I was using a computer. It's just more fun for me. So I know what you're talking about, Mina, when it comes to you're, you're, you're excited about your new computer and your computer arriving. Okay, next up we got uh, Duro Second uh, is saying, Hi, Chris. I'm learning to code from Angela Yu on Udemy that you recommend. She's amazing. Isn't she the best? She's incredible. She's larger in life. I met her in Berlin uh, in uh, late 2019 at a Udemy event. Dude, she's like, she's like, she's charismatic. She's funny. She, she is amazing. She's easily the best, the best teacher on that platform by a mile. By a mile. I recommend everybody that wants to learn how to code. I don't care if you have no experience. I don't care if you're 13 or 96. Um, take her courses if you want to learn how to code. They're fun. Anyone can do it. She'll she'll teach you how to do it. She's great. And she has a British accent, which means she speaks gooder than all of us, or at least me. Yeah. Yeah. And then you wrote, she's awesome. And then you wrote, I'd like to know if it's possible to make some money uh, even uh, while learning. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, so what I would say is that um, everybody has something to teach. And I have a number of courses that will teach you how to teach. And, and they're free. Uh, and the, these courses are basically, they're on Udemy. Um, and I published a couple of them. Uh, one of them is called 40 Tips on How to Make an Online Course. And another one's called Another 40 Tips on How to Make Another Online Course. And they're based on 40 mistakes I've made or 80 in total teaching online. So you can work smarter, not harder. But you already have everything you need to build something far bigger than yourself. That's a great quote by Seth Godin. You have everything you need because you have this. That's all you need. That's all you need. Let me, let me show you how to get those free courses. Okay. Let's go over here. And I will go here. New tab. Actually, let me go to incognito. Okay, here we go. It's not that I don't trust you. Okay. So just go to Udemy, Chris Heroin. Search my name. Yeah, here we go. Um, yeah. So w when you're on my profile page, just go... All the way to the end, uh, and you'll find these courses. Where is it here? So here's another 40 tips on how to make a great uh, online course. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, there's uh, there, there's there's two of them. Okay, um, it, it's yeah. So this one here is it's it's about it's close to four hours long, uh, and I teach you exactly how to teach online. And there's another one like this called 40 tips. And I have a, a lot of international versions. I, I pay to get these translated as well. Um, because I, I really do believe that um, that education and technology can fix all problems in, in the world. Here's some of the international ones. Yeah. yeah. And if you have questions about this, uh, let me know, please. But anybody can teach online. Anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. Uh, there, there are no limits. You have a cell phone, you can teach. Everyone's got something to teach. Even uh, Ninja, uh, who is this, this big Fortnite millionaire who streams over Twitch... Um, he's back on Twitch now. He started out teaching on Udemy how to use Twitch. You know, there, there are people like Patricia Greenway who who teach on how to bake bread. It's 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 incredible. Like anybody can do it. Look, I, I'm not sponsored by Udemy ever. Uh, it's an algorithm. If my courses suck, many of them do. They won't sell. 
but but I think it's the best platform out there. Udemy is Google, and everyone else is is Bing. So anyway, put put your stuff in that marketplace there. Don't give up either. Like for those of you that have made courses and maybe they're not selling right away, just be a pit bull on a pork chop, man. Just be persistent. You know, you'll you'll hit a vein eventually, and one of your courses will be touched by God. It, it'll work. But just pour your heart into it. Think with your heart first. Yeah. All right. I'm getting hungry, man. Oof. If I shake with my right arm, it'll, it'll hurt. I injured my, my right arm uh, working out with my, my son. He can lift more than me now. Yeah. And I got to put on those 20 pounds of muscle. I put on a bunch so far. It's tough to tell. Um, but uh, I have to, I've told the world I've put on 20 pounds of muscle by my, my birthday, which is my, my 50th birthday. Uh, February 2nd, uh, 2022. Yeah. Mm. Oh, so good and good for you. All right, water time. Um, oh, uh, Rose, I, it said that I, I skipped, you skipped my comment about, oh, I skipped it because I thought you were going to come on to the, uh, my, the MBA only call office hours and do Zoom with us uh, so I can help you um, with, with LinkedIn. Uh, but you mentioned here about, can I, can I be on your show if you have time? Of course. Oh my God, yeah. 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 Do it on either a Wednesday or a Friday. But of course, you don't even have to ask. Just, yeah, I'll be there for sure. Yeah. Okay. And Mina said, I, I showed Jasper um, how to change the thermal paste as well. It, it was super fun. Very cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. And for those who are not familiar with that, uh, underneath your processor, your microprocessor, which, which looks like this, this is a, an Intel chip um, for a case study we do in the, in the, in the program. Underneath the processor, what, what people do, or on top, when you put the processor in, uh, people put paste on top. It's called thermal paste to keep it cool, cool and stuff. You can replace it, yeah. Very cool, very cool. All right. Uh, and, and Ted is saying, hey, Chris, uh, what's the update on the trip to Rwanda? Is there any chance we could swing over to Uganda and check out Fruitful Standard? Thanks, Ted. Oh, great. Well, and Ted is, uh, yeah, okay, Ted, if you're asking about uh, Fruitful Standard, that, that's, uh, that's a not-for-profit that, uh, that Rose actually, Rose, you guys can talk here, RZ, up above the RZ uh, LK, uh, Rose Luck uh, found it. You guys can collaborate here if you want. On fruitful sand. In terms of of, uh, of Project Magoo, um, there's still a COVID lockdown, so I've I've raised a lot of money, uh, and I've donated a lot of money personally enough to build one school, and we're going to raise enough money to build another school as well. I made tons of donations to it. We're working on it. We have all the schematics done. Uh, we're just it's gridlock because of because of COVID. Yeah, it's 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 painful, but we'll get there. So instead of doing one school this year, I'm going to do two. I have to. So, and every penny that people donate, I match 100%. And I hope to go bankrupt. Yeah. Yeah. And we have a course on Udemy as well, uh, where all the proceeds uh, go to that. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah. Uh, and then, and if I miss anybody's questions, please, please type them now. Um, and then Manas wrote here, you know, last week you showed us. Uh, the guy who criticized you <laughs> in, in YouTube, you did a lovely job. Thank you. It was funny. Yeah. There was a guy, Nart. His name is Nart. He, he's from Dubai or Abu Dhabi, no, Dubai, I think. And he wrote the meanest thing about myself and my family. And, and I, I, I don't know this guy, a, a psychopath, whatever he is. Uh, and so what I did was I, um, I showed you exactly who he was. All right, and what my response was to him uh, as well, and I do pray for him. Yeah. Turn the other cheek. An unjustified criticism is nothing more than a disguised compliment. So if you're not getting criticized, you you're not successful. Yeah. Cool. All right, all right, guys. Um, so I'm, I'm going to wrap it up now. Um, so with oh, hold on a second. Uh, another question just popped up. If you guys have questions, type them up now or, or I'll, I'll wrap up the, the call. Uh, that's not a threat. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Michael is saying, hey, Chris, uh, you forgot a question on your daily schedule. Did I drink a gallon of water? Dude, you're totally right. You're totally right about that. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the most important. It's my, my, my biggest problem is water. You're right. You're right. I have actually have a different version I, I use now. That's it, it. I use OneNote to do it as well and with my, my stylus and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Water. It's, it's, it's the worst, man. I am so bad at this. Yeah. I, I don't practice what I preach. I'm, I'm, I'm an idiot. Yeah. Mm. That's what we have. That's why we have uh, Christina uh, keeping us, uh, keeping me, me real here. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. And you know, actually, you, you know what I'll do is while you guys type uh, questions and I've got Christina on the call uh, and Christina, I sent you an email last night telling you I was going to do this next week and not today. But I'll do it right now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna change this set right now in real time, and and we're gonna talk about something else. Okay. So let me just go here, actually here, so you guys can see a bit better. I will change the set. Down comes your network is your net worth, and up goes Tucker. Hold that tiger. Okay. Good. And I'm gonna go and get. This from Christina, and this, where is it? Over here. And Christina, the, the, the wonderful card from Isabella. I, I haven't opened the mail in a couple days. I'll, I'll go and grab it, thank you. But what I wanna do now is I'm gonna transition over to talking about uh, Tucker. This will be fun, let's do this. Okay, cool. All right, so first of all, before I talk about uh, Tucker and who this wonderful person was, um, I want to, first of all, show you something that, that Christina, one of my wonderful MBA students, got me for my, my birthday. And, and I want to read uh, the card as well. And this, I paste this to the back of this. She, she bought me and she got me this from the patent office, which I'll talk about in a second. This will be fun. So uh, Christina wrote here, uh, happy birthday, Chris. Uh, we hope you have a wonderful time celebrating with your family. Thank you. Uh, and then you wrote, thank you for being uh, the best teacher and mentor for us. Here's to the best year yet. I hope you like this. Love, Christina Hong. Christian and Isabella Chang. Thank you. And and, and Christina and Christian, uh, husband and wife, uh, they're in my program uh, and very similar to me because my name is is Chris. My wife's name is Christine, right? So, um, and I think it was you, you told me Christian has, has a brother named Christopher as well. I love it. It's great. And Isabella uh, is, uh, is, 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 is their daughter. She's seven. She's awesome. She's funny, well-spoken, intelligent, uh, and she sits beside uh, uh, Christina all day long as Christina takes my degree program, school, and she's in school as well on her own laptop, uh, which is fun. So so she sent me this uh, as well as a card, which I don't have with me. I apologize. And this, so let, let me run through this. this. This will be fun. This will be fun. All right. So let me first of all talk about this guy, Tucker. Okay. So so on the wall behind me uh, is, is, is a poster of a great movie called Tucker, A Man and His Dream. And it was made by Francis Ford Coppola, who made the Godfather uh, trilogy, of course. Um, and it's a real story about this guy named Tucker. And this guy was a very, very positive person. And in the 1930s, he, he made this tank. And it was partially funded by the, the government in the Netherlands. And he was gonna sell it to them. And then what happened was uh, World War II started and um, although the Netherlands needed tanks, they ran out of money and they couldn't afford to, to pay him. So what he did was, instead of freaking out with crisis comes opportunity, he re-engineered that tank that he created to make the best car the world has ever seen. Right there, Tucker. And I'd love to hear Elon's must thoughts on Tucker one day. Because this guy, Tucker, and he's played brilliantly in the movie uh, by, by Jeff Bridges. Brilliant movie. Um, and and, and he, he's such a positive person. Such a positive person. And he always sings this song, this upbeat song called Hold That Tiger. And it just gets him in this, this, this peak state of mind. And so what I do with my MBA degree students is I have them all, I recommend they all download a ringtone that's going to get into a peak mental state. Um, for me, it's a song Radioactive by Imagine Dragon. Imagine Dragons, I think? It's Radioactive. Anyway, it's a great song. I, lo I love it. It's fantastic. So anyway, there, there was this movie about him. Um, and... He ultimately wasn't really successful with the, automo with the car company uh, because the big three in Detroit, the big three auto companies were very corrupt um, and, and they, they greased politicians, et cetera, to get him out of the market. 
Um, but um, he, here's one of the cars here. This is called another one called the, the Tucker Torpedo, uh, which which Christina got me. It says it's the most talked about automobile in the world today. And I love this rustic approach and how this is not glossy. So it works perfectly on the back here. Thank you. So let me put this up here and then I'll, I'll transition into talking about patents uh, and how does copyright law work, trademark patents, all that stuff from scratch with a real life example. It'll be fun. All right. So I will put this over here. Perfect. Okay, great. All right. So let's now talk about patents and, and copyrights, okay? So this here is uh, from the United States Patent Office, okay? And this is the patent, and thank you so much for this, Christina. This is the patent that, that Tucker filed um, in, in the 1930s uh, and then 1940s, I think, uh, is, as well. You, you can see it here, right? And this is uh, from the U.S. Patent Office. And the, the way it works, um, I'll explain. Um, I'm not, a, I'm not a, an intellectual property lawyer, um, seek your own legal advice for first, please. But I'll explain how copyright, trademark, and patents work. Basically, intellectual property. So intellectual property means protecting, you know, the stuff you created. And there's three things to talk about when it comes to intellectual property. Okay, there's copyright, trademark, and patent. This is patent. I'll come to this last. Copyright means protecting um, the text in your book or it means protecting the video you create, okay? Or the words to a song, or a song in general, okay? Um, you can copyright that. And that's why you'll see the little circle C, C with a circle around it. That means something is copyrighted, okay? Uh, and I'll explain how to do all this stuff as well in a second. But let me now transition to trademarks. Trademarks means you protect a brand name or a, a product name. So, uh, and, and it's either TM with a circle around it or R with a circle around it. Um, so when you file for the trademark, before you get it back from the, the government, you can have it as, as TM with a circle around it. And then once it gets registered, then you can change that to an R with a circle around it. So for, for me, my courses and you know the name of my company, it's, it's all registered trademark, R with a circle around it. Um, I've also copyrighted um, my courses, my MBA degree program costs a lot of money to do, uh, but, but it's all been copyrighted, so nobody can copy it. Um, the last thing is patents. Um, I don't use patents, um, but people that create physical products or a better way of doing something, like Amazon with one-click shopping, they file patents. And, and quite often, and it looks like this, and we can all get access to this as well uh, online. Uh, and so sometimes Apple will file a patent for something and uh, TechCrunch and investors on Wall Street will look at it closely because it kind of, it's a schematic, a drawing like this that will kind of tell the marketplace what Apple may or may not be doing uh, in, in the future, okay? Um, so people monitor that, that pretty closely. So, so that's a patent. Now, the way to get a copyright uh, or a trademark or a patent done. There's two websites in the United States when it comes to intellectual property. Uh, the first one I'll talk about is copyright.gov. Uh, let's, let's go there together, okay? So I'm gonna go over here and I will go to, let's go here to copyright.gov. <clears throat> okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, here it is here, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so here, uh, you can learn more about how to file a copyright. Um, you, know, you can do it yourself as well. The cost will be pretty low, actually. It's like 35 bucks for a, for a, a, a small book or something, the copyright. Um, you can do it yourself, or you can pay a couple hundred dollars more and get somebody else to do it. Um, so that, this is where you go for copyright. And you can actually go through here and search to see if something has already been copyrighted. Okay, it, it, it's in here that you can search the database. Now... When it, when it comes to um, uh, uh, patents and, and trademarks, there is something called the USPTO.gov, okay? uh, which is the United States Patent and Trademark Office. And what you do is here is, is where you file it. It's a little bit more expensive to do this, uh, especially patents. Patents can cost um, $100,000 if it's a very complicated biotech patent, or it can cost less than a grant if it's something more simplistic. Um, and these court, the courts always, 
backed up the patent office. It's always backed up. And that's why when you file a patent, people say patent pending, meaning it hasn't been approved yet, but it probably will. That's almost as good as actually being, being approved. Uh, and so you go here for patents and trademarks. That's USPTO.gov. Uh, but for copyright, you actually go to um, copyright.gov, right, to, to get it done here. Okay, and you can always search to see if a trademark has, has already been done, whatever, um, all that stuff. Uh, you, you can search. You can search for my name. And you'll, you'll see which trademarks I have, which copyrights I have, uh, et cetera. Now, the best thing I recommend doing is get, get a lawyer to help you out the first time you do it. And so I use uh, LegalZoom, and it looks like they just changed their, their website. Hi there, Kelly. Um, so I use LegalZoom, and, and you can talk about, uh, you can talk to any type of lawyer you want to here. Um, and so I, I work with a number of lawyers here to do my, my intellectual property. It's the cheapest place to, to do it actually uh, online. Uh, and you can talk to any kind of lawyer you want. Now, it, it gets kind of complicated when you're doing global stuff. So for me, um, you know, years ago when, when I was uh, when I was filing all of my trademarks and copyrights globally as well, um, it was hard because the only country I couldn't really get it done in was United Kingdom or region. Uh, because uh, of Brexit at the time. There was no pre legal precedent. Uh, but what happened was, in terms of other countries, um, in 1989, uh, about 100 countries got together in Madrid. And they, based, and, and they created what's called the Madrid Protocol, which basically means, hey, if you honor my intellectual property stuff in my country, I'll honor yours as well. So, yeah, that's how it works. And, and China's gotten a lot better as well as well it used to be disastrous like even up until recently in china you can go into an apple store and the entire apple store is fake the signage on the outside every product inside it was crazy it, and i remember back uh, in the 80s um and 90s 98 uh, percent of uh of every copy of microsoft windows in china was pirated and bill gates turned a blind eye to it though because he wanted market share first yeah yeah. So anyway, that, that, that explains copyright, patents, and trademarks uh, in a nutshell. Um, if you do it yourself, um, just I recommend actually going to LegalZoom.com first and talking to a lawyer about how to do it. It'll cost you 15 bucks for a one-time call with a lawyer there. And you have to sign up for a six-month trial, whatever it is. Yeah. But that's, that's how it works in a nutshell. All right. All right, let me, let me go through here. Hold on a second. I love my coffee. All right. Uh, all right, hold on a second. <clears throat> all right, next up. And if I miss anybody, just paste it again, please. Uh, Manasseh is saying, I think you have a great weekend. Stay hungry, stay foolish. Great quote from Steve Jobs. Amen. I agree. Uh, and then uh, uh, Mina said, on the Christina challenge, I'm ahead from my time. Good. Excellent. Right now we're at 1030 and I'm at the 11 a.m. mark. I'm never this far ahead of schedule. Probably because I got up early this morning. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, and then uh, Ted is saying, uh, Chris, speaking of criticism, uh, never, never criticize someone until you walked a mile in their shoes. That way, when you criticize them, you'll be a mile away and you'll have his shoes. Oh, I love it. I love that 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 add-on there. It's funny you mentioned that, Ted, because one of my investors when I worked in venture capital, um, really smart guy, a great athlete, um, who actually played with, with Tiger Woods at, at Stanford uh, and then in the, uh, the amateur uh, and then the pro tour as well. I'm not going to say who he is. But he told me that uh, when, when Tiger Woods was first getting famous when he was a teenager, maybe 20, whatever it was, um, he told me some stories. But before he told me these stories about him, he said he knows Tiger Woods. And I said at the time, I said, oh, my God, it's terrible what he did, but cheating on his wife and stuff. And he said to me, um, you know, I'm a pretty religious guy, and I never trust anybody that cheats on their spouse in business uh, but because um, they'll cheat you as well. But I remember what he said to me. He said, Chris, and he was a nice guy about it. He said, never, never judge a man until you walk a mile in his shoes. And I said, what, what do you mean by that? And he said, Chris, there's so much temptation. And he told me a story about when he was on the tour with, with Tiger uh, and, and they were younger and they were in Tokyo. And uh, they were at a bar one night uh, and the Nike sales rep was there. See, I, I never get, I'm never going to get sponsored because I can always be honest about every company. 
a Nike, their Nike sales rep was there. And the Nike sales rep uh, in the bar in Tokyo said, uh, do you prefer blondes or brunettes? And Tiger and, and my buddy were like, what the hell is that? Blondes, I guess. I don't know. Whatever. And they, they kept drinking. And then they went home. And then they got a knock on their door that night at like one in the morning or whatever it was. Uh, with with that guy came by uh, with five gorgeous Australian blonde uh, ladies. They turned them away, whatever, good night, done. Um, that's what they told me. It, it, that was it. Um, and, and then I, I, I thought about it and I thought, you know what, you're kind of right. Like, never judge a person until you walk a mile in their shoes. There, there's so much temptation. Like for rock stars as well. And even for baseball players. Like, I have a buddy, his name is Dave Krug, great guy, I went to high school with him, uh, and he was in my fraternity as well at McGill. And uh, he was an amazing baseball pitcher, incredible. Uh, and so he got signed to a contract, I remember, uh, we used to have snowball fights, he was always on my team, he was awesome. Uh, but he got signed to a contract by the, the California Angels, at the time it was called the California Angels, before they rebranded as the Anaheim Angels. And he played minor league baseball uh, in, in America, uh, and, and he hated it, because, you know, he was... He was making twelve grand a year, having bagged lunches, and he only got to pitch every five days and in the middle of nowhere. But he would say that even in a ball, uh, you know, he'd be after a game, he'd walk out of the locker room, and there'd be people lined up to meet them. Like the temptation was unbelievable, even at a minor league level. So uh, yeah, I guess never judge a man until you walk a mile in their shoes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, all right. Let, let me scroll down here. See, if there's more questions. Uh, ne next up, um, uh, Doctor Asif uh, is saying, uh, "Hey, Professor, thank you for transforming uh, lives. Uh, uh, thank you for mentioning that. Appreciate it. Uh, as an educator, it's always refreshing to see a passionate person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like in any sector. Like w one of my favorite movies, which I don't talk about. I should get a poster behind me for it. It's called Contact." with Jodie Foster. You guys, oh my God, you guys got to see the movie. I, I love it. I saw it in like 96 with my mom and my little sister Katie uh, in Canada. We went to the movie theater and I, my mouth was open the whole time. I was just, oh my God. Because uh, the passion that Jodie Foster had in that movie for her craft. Um, and so she was uh, in that movie, Contact, um, and I have the soundtrack from Alan Silvestri as well. Whenever I'm not feeling passion i listened to that as well uh but and matthew mcconaughey was in it as well he's dope he's awesome but in that movie contact which you should all watch please <clears throat> jodie foster um <clears throat> she's a scientist and they think that they 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 found uh intelligent life and um she wants to get funding to be able to buy create a rocket ship to go visit wherever this intelligent life is and she's so passionate in her delivery to government officials, etc., like tears in her eyes, passionate, and and she's she's one of the most gifted actresses in history. But that passion, it really resonated with me, and and I respect anybody that's incredibly passionate about their craft. So check out that movie. Um, again, it's called Contact with Jodie Foster. <clears throat> All right, next up we've got uh, Dennis. Um, Who's saying? Uh, what are your thoughts on Bernard uh, Arnault? I don't really have any any thoughts, uh, but my thoughts on Bernard Madoff is his name was Madoff. Like we should have known, <clears throat> his name was Madoff. He made off. <clears throat> All right, hold on, hold on a second. I need to get some of my throat. <clears throat> and I'm not sick, by the way. It happens when you talk a lot, which I do. <clears throat> there you go. This is called Throat 37. A lot of singers use this as well. Um, I don't know how singers do it. Um, Robert Plant, he can't hit those high notes anymore. Uh, he threw out his vocal cords <clears throat> uh, from Led Zeppelin. Uh, but this is what they all take, Throat 37. All right. Um, all right, next up, uh, Christina is saying, uh, Chris, thanks. Chris and I watched Tucker. Awesome. The Man is Dream movie uh, on, on Amazon Prime Video, and we loved it. So glad uh, you like your birthday, Tucker Torpedo Car Sign. 
uh, in the U.S. Patent Office gifts. And the letter, too. I, I still have to get the letter. You, you showed me the, the wonderful um, uh, card that Isabella, uh, my niece, uh, made. I, I'm, I'm touched. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, but this, this is, I love this. Thank you. I love that. It, it's such a perfect gift, too. Thanks. Especially because in a studio, you can't have anything glossy. Like, for example, all these um, <clears throat> these pictures here on the wall, I had to, I had to get rid of all the frames. You know, it, it, and the same thing over, over here behind me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, and then uh, Christina wrote here, when I was a little kid, maybe five years old, uh, in the old country, uh, my mother used to say to me, uh, she'd warn me, she'd say, don't get too close to people. You'll catch their dreams. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Don't get too close to people. You'll catch their dreams. Fascinating. Fascinating. The worst thing can happen to us is <clears throat> we, we wake up one day and we're really, really old. And we dread getting out of bed because we work for this schmuck that pays us this much money to make their dreams become a reality. So my, my, my role is to humbly help if I possibly can make your business dreams uh, be, become a reality as well. And that's why I, I, I think that having a positive attitude is everything. It's everything. And that's why I love that movie Tucker, uh, Man in His Dream, because he had such a positive attitude as well. Yeah. Attitude is everything. Yeah. I think, therefore, I am. I've never met a successful person with a negative attitude. Never. That's why you got to cut off everyone in your life with a negative attitude. It works. All right. Um, next up, uh, Dr. Asif uh, is saying, uh, have you come across the quote, reading can seriously damage your ignorance? Oh, my God. Dude, I love that. That is awesome. Uh, readers are leaders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Readers, reading can seriously damage your ignorance. Oh, my God, dude. That is genius. Like, if, if, if I were a public library uh, and I want to make a PSA announcement, uh, and, and instead of saying readers are leaders, reading can seriously damage your ignorance. I love that. Oh, my God. I, I, I love that. Oh, I love that. Thank you for that. I, I have to take a little screen print of that so I, I can remember that. Oops, wrong mouse. There you go. Thank you. And, and then Christina uh, wrote here, uh, Chris, yes, Contact is an amazing movie. I watch it every few years. You're the only person I've heard of that watches it like I do. But no one else mentions that. We're we're similar, the whole Tony Robinson growing up and stuff, too. Definitely, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, Jodie Foster is the bomb. She's amazing. She's incredible. I love her. I love her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing, yeah. Um, she was in Panic Room, too. I remember, remember that one years ago. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, um, and then Rose is saying, uh, by the way, how's my favorite Har Haroon? <laughs> the one whose name starts with uh, R and ends with a, with Y. Yeah, Ruby. Uh, Ruby the cat. Yeah. Dude, she's growing. I, when I bought her, or we got her um, uh, back from the shelter, in, I think it was in November. Um, and Dylan did a brilliant job, my, my youngest one, of, of co convincing uh, Christine, this guy here. Um, of, of, uh, that we need to get a cat. And by the way, for those of you that are living and you're not happy, you're living in quarantine, you're not happy, and you're lonely, get a kitten. Like, I, I'm telling you, there, there is no better time in your life, it, as long as you don't have allergies, obviously, there's no better time in your life to get a kitten than today. It, it, it It's unbelievable what the amount of love that that cat has brought into my house. I know it sounds ridiculous. Ruby. We got her in November. She was this small. Now she's like this. She's fun. She's fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but everyone's happy when she's around. It's amazing. It's incredible. It's incredible. Forget about getting a video game or a new TV, whatever. Dude, go and get a kitten. Trust me. And Mina knows this. Mina's one of my wonderful MBA students. She's got uh, a, a kitten who's cute as heck uh, and a puppy as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get a kitten. Get a kitten. Especially if you're lonely or, or bored or whatever it is. So fun. So fun. Yeah. She's great. She, she's bigger now. Yeah, yeah. She still doesn't like being held, which, which kills me because I, I'm an affectionate person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she'll let me pet her and stuff when it's feeding time. I'm trying. Yeah. No, she loves to play, though. We, we, we play a lot. It's fun. And I got Dylan, my youngest one, for Christmas. 
I got him uh, the Nintendo Switch game uh, that uh, Mario. It's it's got a little car, Mario car, whatever, and you use the, the the Switch to to play it, and it's got augments of reality throughout the house. So does Dylan actually play the racing cart stuff with? No, does he terrorize the cat with it? Yes, in, in a good way though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, anyway, that that's that's what my house has become. It's fun though. And I'm gonna miss my kids, man, when they go back to school. Like I, I've been able to bond with my kids. It's been so fun. Like my older kids, the two of them, they're still not back because of quarantine. Um, and the teachers' union here is um, is pretty strict about or adamant about not going back. Um, so who knows? Maybe next year. I have no idea. No idea. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, and then Dr. Asiva saying, Chris, I was wondering how can I market some of your Udemy courses to my students, especially the ones who come to the UK uh, uh, from a, a, a rote learning environment? Yeah, if they're uh, thank you. If 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 they're um, if 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 they're starving students and come from a, a tough background, it's it's free, of course. Just send me a LinkedIn message. I'll give you everything for free. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, and, and then, uh, Christian or Christina, sorry, is saying, uh, Chris, uh, the quote of when I was a little kid, you'll cast her dreams quote was from Tucker movie. Uh, Abe character said to Zucker, Oh, no way. Okay, cool. Okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. I don't remember that line. I'll have, to, I'll have to watch it again. Hold that tiger. I love it. I love it. Cool. All right. Um, uh, and then we got about, uh, 15 or so or 20 minutes left. Anybody has questions, type them now or, or I can I can wrap it up until your call. This is your time. You guys are the students and the customer. So Dr. Receive is saying, I need some advice. I believe I've taken on too much work and at times overwhelming. Uh, we're in total lockdown at present. Uh, going out uh, to the park is, is not possible. Any tips? Okay. So let me, okay, so there's a couple of things you're, you're asking there. Uh, I might need you to clarify, please. Um, so you wrote, um, I've taken on too much work, which is overwhelming. And then you wrote, we're in lockdown and going to the park is not possible. Uh, it, 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 any tips? So um, I, I guess two questions there. What, one is uh, how to have better time management, um, if possible, uh, it, or to accomplish more. Uh, and the other one is, how to get out of the house let, let me know if, if, if that's it but in terms of of time management I, I i humbly recommend doctor that you use that schedule that i, that I mentioned earlier go to uh, haroonventures.com slash all lowercase schedule um and schedule each day just for the weekdays i promise you it helps a lot it helps a lot um and it's kind of like when i used to be a programmer i remember um we, we we'd have these elaborate contracts to create something um and in the last 5% of the project, you're like, oh my God, what do I do now? I'm way behind schedule. And so what you do is you categorize the nice to haves versus the need to haves. And you get rid of all the nice to haves, like the bells and whistles, the extra icons for the GUI, graphical user interface, et cetera. And just focus on what needs to be done. And by scheduling each day uh, per my daily scheduler, um, you can be much more productive and get a lot more stuff done. And you have to take off every Sunday or Saturday or Friday, wherever it is religiously, um, uh, one day a week. Otherwise you will burn out. It's the best investment in yourself. I know it's counterintuitive. You have tons of work. You're like, I have to work seven days. You don't. If you manage your time better. We all have time to do everything. So just use that daily schedule. I promise you it works. I promise you it works. And if it doesn't work for you, let me know. And we'll work together on a plan B. But I also have a course called um, How to Delegate that you can check out as well at, at this website here, <laughs> um, which will kind of help you plan each day and decide what to delegate to other people or what to outsource. One of my favorite things to do is, uh, I, well, I love having very small companies. I, I never have lots of employees because um, it just becomes a disaster. I like to have fewer employees and pay them extremely well. But uh, what I like to also do is I love to work on automating stuff. And so um, if, if, if you go to my, my, my website, for example, um, there, there's a heck of a lot of automation in, included here. So um, 
this website, which which I made. Whoops, Haroon. Here we go. Yeah, uh, this website. Like all this stuff is is borrowed from somewhere else. Not borrowed, but for example, this thing at the top that that lists all, you know number of students, etc. That's a little plugin from this elfsite.com website. Um, so that that's there. Um, all this stuff. This is actually on on YouTube, right? So it's I'm, I'm and this this here. This here is is from Elf Elfsite as well. Their, their website. I didn't code all that stuff. It's pretty simplistic. Same here. All this stuff working smart, not harder. And then when it comes to, to automation, um, with respect to the daily vlogs, these are added here automatically as well through automation. Okay, so I, I never have to manually add these here. Uh, it's just a little plugin I use. Uh, also from Elfsite.com. I should work for them. Yeah. And the same thing with, uh, with 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 the weekly webcast. It's all automated. It all automatically gets gets added here. Um, office hours one twenty three will get added here automatically by the end of today. Right, so I, I love using automation software to automate everything, everything, uh, and that way I'm much, much more productive. And, and I even have um, this, this, this notion, this code I live by, so to speak, which is called "touch hand once." So everything can only touch my hand once. I know it's weird, but for example, in the kitchen, when I make a salad, when I get uh, the spices from the cupboard, I can only touch them once. So I get it goes in the salad, goes back in the cover right, right away. It's bizarre, I know, but that mentality and the automation um, uh, mentality as well and the outsourcing mentality I have will save you a lot of time and money in the long run and your sanity. Yeah, I love to automate everything. Same thing in my house. Like like this, this the doors all open for me to come down to my studio and everything turns on uh, automatically a couple of minutes before I get here. The coffee is automatically made for me. Everything is, is automated. I feel like... Um, <coughs> gonna date myself here but if you watch the first five minutes of Pee Wee Herman's Big Adventure remember the house with all the crazy robotics I'm kind of like that and I know every line from that movie uh, just saying I do okay every line I do yeah I do <laughs> okay um Yeah, and 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 Doctor Asif, if 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 I didn't answer all, all your questions there, uh, uh, please let me know because I want to humbly help. Uh, with it, with it, with respect to lockdown going on, and, and you're not allowed to go out out outdoors, and how do you get your sanity? Um, so I use this app that that kind of helps. Uh, it, it's called Calm, C A L M. So check that out as well. It's for meditating. But the, the beautiful thing is that you can you're, there's actually wonderful music and nature you can hear in the background. So I, I, I feel like I'm I feel like I'm outdoors. Don't you feel more relaxed already? Check it out. Calm. C A L M. Um, and and what I what I also do sometimes is uh, when I work on my couch, uh, I'll turn on Apple TV, but I'll just turn on the screensaver. Or have an app actually I downloaded for it, uh, which is um, live views from all over the world. And so I'll throw on a beach in the background, right? a live view of a beach, um, and I can hear the rolling waves. And oh, it's so relaxing just thinking about it. Even yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's tons of apps like that you can use in your television to help you whistle while you work. All right, uh, uh, next up, Manasseh is saying, I've always believed that if you're an entrepreneur, you need to be ready to sleep uh, on the payment when things are down, and you need to be ready to sleep in a palace when, when things are good. Yeah, yeah, and, I, and I've, I've lived that life. The, the life of a consultant is during the same day you, you have a meal from a, a vending machine, and then you go to an expensive restaurant with clients. Like, I, I've been adaptable my, my whole life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I was I, I was pretty happy when I was younger though when I when I had nothing yeah yeah retail therapy doesn't work folks all right um, Pavic is is saying um, hi Chris I want to learn business development consulting and consulting selling for my future endeavors uh, any uh, any suggestions yeah yeah. Um, I don't, 
I don't really know if there, I, I have an answer for that. Um, I, I used to be a consultant, um, and the only thing I did a little bit differently than I do now with 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 my my business is um, you 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 have to look at uh, which resources to place and which projects went, and you have to look at a critical path as well. Um, but but I, I I schedule each day anyway, so that kind of helps me. So I would say just just being very very like. Just have use the daily schedule I provide you with in the MBA program. I think that will help. And in terms of maybe you can you can use the the venture capital boot camp uh, part of the curriculum in the third semester, the first five classes of semester three, um, and, and you can basically take that um, and 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 create that create a blueprint for whatever project you're going to deploy as a consultant. You can use that, or what you can do is you can go to the um, the the EMS track in the fourth semester. Uh, when I gave you that spreadsheet, it's got a hundred different steps to analyzing companies. You can maybe use that as well as one of your weapons in your arsenal, so to speak, or arrows in your quiver uh, to help you um, crystallize your thought process when it comes to adding value to your clients or business development. Yeah. Okay. But in the consulting industry, especially consulting, it's it's all about relationships. Like when you make partner in a consulting firm or an investment bank or a law firm, you're a glorified salesperson. That's what you are. You got to bring in more business. But when you're an army of one and you're a consultant, you're you're the only partner in your firm. So you got to be a great salesperson. Uh, and so it, it's networking is key to get customers, obviously. Yeah. And I think that, Bavik, if you think of yourself as a thought leader and you opine or you, you write articles on LinkedIn at least once a week uh, on whatever sector it is you're in, I know you're in the, the networking sector. You've, you've, configured Cisco and, and Juniper routers for years. But if you opine about that or give your thoughts on that, like once a week on LinkedIn, you know, at first no one's going to look at it, but eventually, and you got to be in this for the long run and stubborn. Uh, but eventually people are going to look at it uh, and they're going to be like, oh my gosh, dude, this is, this is the, the thought leader in this area. Uh, and eventually the media will come to you and others as well. And you're, you're helping other people. It's a whole give and take mentality. And so I, I recommend writing a lot. Uh, on LinkedIn, eventually do vlogs as well. Uh, and if you want, go to my website. I just released a, a vlog course last night. It's free. Uh, HaroonVentures.com. And that will help to spread your brand. Yeah. All right, next up, uh, Peyton. <clears throat> uh, uh, Peyton is saying, um, and Peyton, it was so funny. When we had our one-on-one -on -one recently, I... I heard I think it was your your kid in the background. And you gotta savor those days, man. Because I'm telling you, man, like they grow up fast. Like, it, thank God you're at home now. Like, enjoy every second. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Um, so uh, Peyton is saying, question. Uh, I have a YouTube channel. It, it's great. I, I saw it. Yeah, yeah. In our one on one, that's focusing on uh, fun skits produced uh, weekly. Um, uh, you have to use TikTok as well. You can't just use TikTok. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to repurpose that content uh, for TikTok. So think about uh, recording it or editing it also in in, in portrait mode. Yeah, yeah. So you're, I have a YouTube channel that's focused on fun skits produced weekly. Uh, it takes time to create, but the quality is higher. Uh, but I want to do daily content. Should I create a separate channel uh, for, for that? Yeah. Oh, it's a lot of maintenance. Um Yeah, you, you can, uh, as long as the daily content um, is not going to become an editing nightmare or scripting nightmare. You know, just um, like, uh, like Peyton, take my, my, my YouTube um, course I just, or this, uh, or the vlogging course I put up for free, uh, which is actually from the YouTube course. Go to my website, haroonventures.com, uh, and you'll see those vlogs I made. They're, they're not high quality at all, uh, but I made 28 of them, um, I think in a day or something. Um, just make sure it's something that you can easily create, like whip out your iPhone, Android handset, whatever, um, and then just create it. Because, you know, getting your, 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 your Sony, you got the same Sony as me. What's the model of the skin? The Sony A7S III. Getting the A7S III on a gimbal, all ready to go. It, it can be hard sometimes, um, especially with, with the microphone, all that stuff synchronizing, and then bringing it in, editing it and everything. So just... I would use this for your daily ones and maybe use the camera for, for your weekly ones as well. And don't plan these things. Just wing it always and just be you. Use the transition words we talked about in the MBA program. Keep them short because less is more. Yeah. So maybe two channels. 
Channel one is this, channel two is that. Yeah. Meaning the camera that I'm pointing at that you also have. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, and Mr. Invisible too is saying, hi, Chris. Uh, should I learn Python for finance uh, and business? Um, only if you're intellectually curious and you enjoy it. Otherwise, don't bother. Yeah. You, you can't become a programmer for work. You have to do it because you absolutely love doing it. You have to. Otherwise, people will run circles around you in the industry because they all do because they love it. Yeah. All right, but there's a lot of uh, uh, data and, and, and anal data analysis tools you can use, or business intelligence tools that don't require you to code. You know, you know stuff like Tableau, which is now part of Salesforce, or, or Hyperion, which is now part of Oracle, or Business Objects, which is now part of SAP, or Cognos, which is now part of, of IBM. Um, all those aforementioned products, you don't have to code at all. It's just drag and drop, and it's fun like Excel. All right. Okay, and then Dr. Seif is saying, uh, with respect to your question, I meant how to refresh your brain uh, in clement uh, conditions. Um, uh, I miss those summer days. Uh, regarding schedules, at time I have to create a to-do list twice a day. Any tips on, on creating functional teams? Yeah, so I have a course, uh, Dr. Asif. Uh, you can go to this link here uh, called How to Delegate. Um, and I think that will help you a lot um, so that you have less on your plate and you outsource more stuff to your employees or people you might want to hire as contractors, etc. Yeah, it works. It works. And, and there's, there's a lot about scheduling in that, that course as well. Yeah. 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 And, and you wrote you miss those summer days. Yeah, it is. It can be depressing, man. Um, so what I do is... And this is going to seem out there, but I'll I'll show you anyway. Um, and I biohack, I experiment a lot. So I, I'm going to move up here to my, this is where I do one-on-ones. I walk on my treadmill when I do one-on-ones. Um, but what I've got up here, it's tough to see, is I've got a light. And of course, it's going to blow, make it all blown out. I look like an idiot here. Uh, but this light here, um, and I could time it to only stay on for a certain amount of time. And this light, it's it's called, write this down. Uh, Miroco, M-I-R-O-C-O. And it's basically like we all need light to be happy. Oops, you can't see me anymore. <laughs> Come down to my level. Here we go. We all need light to be happy. Uh, and so you can't get vitamin D from, from that. Um, but I, I recommend getting a light like that or at least keeping the Keep the, keep the shades open, especially for me because I'm indoors. You can get very depressed if you're indoors all day with, with not many, you know, with not much natural light, etc. You know, so you, you got to have natural light. Keep the window open. Uh, and let, let me show you this, this product here. Okay, let's go to um, Amazon Miroko. Okay, Miroko. All right, let's see here. Miroko, I guess they make lots of products. Here it is here. Yeah, yeah, okay, good. So um, this is the one I have right here, okay? Uh, and I have a couple of them. It's it's, it's light therapy. It, I like to biohack. This may or may not work, whatever, for everybody, but but it works for me, uh, especially because I'm indoors a lot. Um, it, it a lot, like my, my brother, he uh, he's, a, he's a radiologist, and so is my dad, which means they fix radios. But they're always in, I mean, traditionally, they've been in the basement, um, their whole lives because x-ray equipment um, is is heavy. Um, and so I always recommend this stuff for, for them as well and for everybody actually in my family. Yeah. So maybe you need more, more light. Um, and, and also try turning on your your television as, uh, uh, you know, you, you or, or one of your monitors uh, as a, a scenery channel, so to speak. So it's, it's like you have a window uh, to, and out the window you're looking at the beach. Right. And they're, they're, it's kind of like getting those fake fireplace um, videos for your television, whatever it is. Um, you can always have that running in the background. Um, it, it's not it's not a perfect rep, uh, uh, replacement, so to speak, for being outdoors. But if you're not allowed to go outdoors because of COVID and whatnot, it's it's a nice kind of way to fake it till you make it, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. OK. All 
All right, uh, and then uh, uh, Dr. Rasif is saying, Chris, um, you've talked about passion a lot on this forum. Is it possible that people need guidance in order to focus on one passion rather than getting distracted by, by glitters uh, uh, around them? Yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I always believe in, like, I, I believe my, my role as a, as a parent uh, and a teacher is I'm a waiter. And, and hopefully I'm a, I'm a waiter with half decent food. When you go to a nice restaurant, you you look at the whole menu, but you only choose one thing. But so I want to expose my students to many different types of of businesses, careers, etc. And when they get that butterfly feeling in their stomach of excitement, then that means they can catch lightning in a bottle, or at least try that career track out, which could be something they're passionate about. Same thing with my kids. I will never tell my kids, you know, what to do. I I think my my role, and I got to wrap this up in a second. Sorry. I think my, my role as a, as a teacher, a parent, is to, number one, build confidence. Uh, number two, um, expose students and my kids to everything. Um, with, with my kids, not with my students, but religion is number one, I should say, believing in God. Uh, but um, just expose you to everything so you can pick yourself. Otherwise, what happens if you force your kids, for example, to choose a line of work, like, God forbid, being a lawyer, like, who the hell would do that unless you're a civil rights lawyer? or being a doctor, whatever, if you force them to do something um, or really encourage them to, then when you have small kids, you have small problems. But when you have big kids, you have big problems. Um, and yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I will never tell my kids what to do. Uh, I'll never tell them if they have to go to college, it's up to them. I'll expose them to everything. I'll hire tutors for them if needed, whatever. My kids are in public school. I don't believe in private school. But it's, it's their life. And I just want them to be confident and happy. So everyone's path is different. Everyone finds their passion at different different times of their life. And sometimes you 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 change when you get older. Like what you're passionate about when you're younger, you're no longer passionate about. So you gotta adapt like a chameleon and just try something new. But you should always be doing what you love doing. Otherwise, what's the point? And I get it, we all have to pay the bills. And we all need to take jobs where we can support ourselves and our family. But the real goal should be to find something you're passionate about. Because the whole notion of, I'm going to work my whole life so I can retire um, and enjoy the last 10 years of my life. Like, what a pitiful existence that is. You can only be happy today. Okay. Okay. Um, All right, so there, there's a bunch more questions, but I'm, I'm going to wrap it up now. Uh, if you're my MBA degree student um, in, in Gold and Platinum program, you, you can join me on my um, MBA degree or my, my weekly office hours for MBA students. It starts at 1120. Uh, I'm going to take a little break here. Uh, otherwise, uh, just copy your questions and, and paste them again next week. Thank you. Uh, God bless y'all. Uh, this has been a fun webcast. Uh, webcast 123, I can't believe it. Uh, within 24 hours, my wonderful staff, what they do, is they take all questions you've asked and they put it in the description field so you can get clickable access. So if you subscribe to my vlog, I will see you manana and every day at 9 a.m. my time because that's when my, my vlogs drop, yo. Uh, otherwise, God bless y'all. Have a weekend and I'll see you next Thursday and every Thursday forever at 8 a.m. my time. Thank you. When you grow up, you tend to get told that the world is the way it is and you're... Your life is just to live your life inside the world. Try not to bash into the walls too much. Uh, uh, try to have a nice family life. Uh, have fun. Save a little money. Um, but life, th that's a very limited life. Life can be much broader once you discover one simple fact. And that is everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. And you can change it. You can influence it. You can... You can build your own things that other people can use. And the minute that you understand that you can poke life and actually something will, you know, if you push in, something will pop out the other side, that you can, you can change it, you can mold it, um, that's maybe the most important thing, is to shake off this, uh, th this uh, erroneous notion that life is, is there and you're just going to live in it versus embrace it, change it, improve it, make your mark upon it. Um, 
I, I think that's very important. And however you learn that, once you learn it, uh, you'll want to change life and make it better because it's kind of messed up in a lot of ways. Um, once you learn that, you'll never be the same again.